my story of very entitled in laws. To start, I'm a 46 female, married and have three kids. Ten years ago we came into money, a lot of money. I worked hard in my specific field which earns a lot. I had done some smart investments and they have paid out. I have been steadily adding to my bank account for these years. My husband considers this my money, we don't have a prenup. Hence, I will talk as it is mine. When the first payload came in I did what my husband and I always discussed if we would have the money. Mortgage was paid off, I bought a new car and I managed to buy a nice house in our favorite holiday destination. We rent this one out to a very nice family for most of the year. We set up college funds for our children, each an equal amount which should be enough to pay for 5 years. If there is money left from the fund, the children can use this as a down payment on their own house or apartment. When the money kept coming in, thanks to the investments and my work, I looked towards what could be done for my immediate family. My husband has two sisters and we have five nieces and nephews on his side from one of the sisters. My brother has two children as well. It was decided that all of the nieces and nephews would have college funds as well, for the same amount as my children under the same strict stipulations. I would get the information about the costs and make sure everything is paid. My eldest niece had already started college so I paid the amount already paid to her parents to keep everything fair. She managed to finish within the four years and has some money left. I had an accountant dear friend find out what would be beneficial to my brother and one of my SILs in regards to their mortgage. I paid off the majority for the both of them. My parents were sent on a nice trip, since their house is already paid of and for both my ILs and other SIL rent so I paid a certain amount so they can save that money. Part of the money goes to charity at home and abroad. I also set up some college funds for the children of our closest friends and family members. As a treat, hubby, Lo and I went on a paid by us, me vacation with both my own extended family and his. Now, at this point everyone is very grateful. However, one of the sills always has a need to be in the spotlight or that one or all of her children need to be. She's nice to my face but I know for a fact that she has been bad mouthing me, making passive aggressive remarks about me and my work and my person but always in such a manner that you would be the bitch, asshole if you would say something. My usual tactic and one that works always is dot 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 play the innocent, dumb one and nitpick on what she says. I have managed to shut her up many times without being classified as a bitch. So the past few years Syl has been hinting that I should pay for a very nice, all-inclusive resort holiday for her and her family abroad, since I have the money. Note, they have money saved that would initially been used for the college funds of their kids. Money that has barely been used. Covid hit and she has been silent. She and her husband took and still take it very seriously. Now that restrictions are mostly lifted she had a birthday party for her and her son since her son really wanted to have a party. No biggie, we show up with a gift for her and her son and all is well. Birthday boy got a voucher to buy a tent or the camping gear he wanted. Sil got a voucher to use whatever way she wanted. I added some sunscreen, drinks and such as I knew she wanted to go on a holiday of some sorts. Or so we thought. She asks what our holiday plans are. We say that we won't be crossing any foreign borders, stay in home country but we booked a cabin somewhere for a week. Very nice, not luxurious or anything. We would still need to cook and do the grocery shopping. Sil starts on the oh how nice. We are still thinking about what we want to do. My lovely hubby and I both have an inkling what she's hinting at but we start spouting ideas in the hopes of avoiding tragedy. We have family at one place, maybe they could stay there for a weekend or so. There is a campsite somewhere else, with entertainment for children of various ages. Then it comes. She shows us something she found on the world wide web and to be honest, it looks amazing. Not too luxurious but still very nice. All inclusive, water park for the kids, spa center, the whole shebang. Price tag for a family of seven. 35.000 dollars. So hubby says that's a lot but is glad they saved so much to do this. Sil then goes, oh we don't. We thought you would be paying, as my birthday gift. Say dot 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 what? People, she just told us what she was looking at. No scratch that. She expected me to give about 35.000 dollars as a gift for her birthday. Just because I have money. She goes on that I earn enough in their family, our godson. Other nieces and nephews have been promised already and so forth. We all sat in stunned silence. Birthday boy and two of his sisters even looked up to see what we would say while playing with our LOs. Hubby just started laughing, thinking it was a joke. Phil just sat there and looked on and I did a seemingly very good impression of a fish. No Sil was dead serious. You have the money, you can just give it. You won't miss it. This woman has shown her disdain for me and my work many times in a very sweet, passive aggressive manner so that it is hard to call her out on it. Me, hubby and even her father still have done so. 
I just sat there and listened how she widened her eyes, trying to look sweet something she does every time she wants something and giving all the reasons why we should give the money, without counting the voucher we gave her. I then regain my wits and just say the full sentence she didn't want to hear. Me? No. Sil, but you have the money. Me? I have money? That is true. Sil, so you can pay for it. Me? I could indeed. Sil, interrupting me oh that's great. Me? But I won't. Sil, but, but, but we deserve it? You won't miss it? We're family yep. Unfortunately you and I are family now. I love being family of your kids however. Me? Fact, we're indeed family. Fact, we all deserve a nice holiday after the fluff show called COVID. False, I would surely miss it, since it won't be in the bank account. Intended that one as a joke. Sill and Bill, continue rant about how much they think I should pay for it. Me, listen, you have shown many times you do not respect me or my line of work. You do not respect the fact I worked very hard, made sacrifices to earn this money. You do not respect the fact that I have paid off your mortgage, paid for the college education of your kids and even some money for their own place. You badmouth me, call me names and even told people hubby should divorce me. Sill is trying so hard to deny it. Bill calls me a liar. Phil joins in and sides with me. Her own children tell their father that they have heard their own mother say horrible things about me. Birthday boy even recorded one conversation she had with someone while he was making a TikTok video. He showed this. Bill went mute. Conversation continues. Sil notices she won't get the expensive holiday she wanted. Fine, then don't pay for this holiday. The least you can do is pay for our plane tickets and let us stay at your holiday home. Favorite holiday destination. Remember, I rented out to a local family for most of the year. Due to COVID they have to stay there as they can't, are afraid to travel. Me, not happening. First of all, the family can't leave. Second, you don't get to make demands. The voucher you got has a very generous amount of money on it for you to use the way you please. Maybe toward a holiday. Third, we already went on a paid by us, me holiday. So you got a paid for holiday already. Fourth, if you want more money then get a job that will pay more. You have a degree. Last, you treat me like crap and still expect me to just hand over my hard-earned money. Sil starts the waterworks and turns to her father, who completely sided with me. He told her he understood me. He told her he knew how hard I worked and the sacrifices me and hubby made for this. Hubby is pissed. He sees red and tells his sister in no uncertain terms that this won't be happening and how dare they. He tells her that we're leaving. We pack up the kids and go home. Later we get a call. MIL has FM tendencies as this sill is her favorite. She tries the whole spiel on how hard they had it before I came into money and helped them. Etc. Hubby dealt with her perfectly and she understood after a lengthy conversation. Now here is where I just laugh. Apparently Sill's kids are pissed that she pulled this stunt and went full rebel mode. We have a great relationship and seemed afraid that this would influence it. They managed to come by and we had a heart to heart. I told them we didn't blame them for the actions of their parents. I explained to them the reasons for not handing out money like that after the initial gifts. The youngest seemed to side more with mom and dad, but the rest said they understood. They know about their generous college, home funds. I stated to them that we wouldn't want for them to do anything against their parents as they still live there. They stayed for dinner and then went home. As of now, the kids are barely talking to their parents. They still do their chores, let them know things but that's it. FM in the form of other family members came in as Sil had sent them messages and called them. A simple Facebook post by birthday boy with the video put a stop to that. Sil and Bill had an enormous backlash by the FM, calling them out. They have been uninvited to certain events. We have received apologies from the FM. Some told me that they had a hard time as they understood both her and me. The only thing that bothers me is the fact that my pill are caught in the middle, especially my MIL who is very family oriented. I know some of you might, will wonder why I just won't give the money. One of the reasons why is the way she has treated me, even before I came into the money. Another reason is that I simply feel uncomfortable just handing out money. I simply ask you to give your opinion in a kindly fashion. AITA for not paying. You paid for them. You pay for us. Submitted August 2020. Burner account. Long story once more. I was the one who still demanded that I'd pay for a holiday. Here is a part two. So Sil was very disappointed and angry that I didn't bow down to her every whim and paid for a holiday. For those who read my first post know that I'm well off, thanks to hard work and some luck. We had some FM flying monkeys come in because of my Sil. Most backed down and understood where we stood and left us alone. Unfortunately, the whole family of my DH now knows that we have a bank account with dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign on it. As Sil had called a lot of family members to complain and spill the beans, they began talking amongst themselves and their children. 
Some of the aunts, uncles, and cousins didn't think it fair that I paid for some college funds for some of children of cousins and that I paid for a family holiday. To note, I only have college funds for the children of cousins who we have a close relationship with. That's about six cousins with around 12 kids. I'm in this family for almost 20 years and I only see the majority of the aunts, uncles, and cousins on the yearly by yearly family reunion dot 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 if everybody comes. I haven't seen some of them in around 5 to 10 years. A couple of days after the fallout with Syl and Aunt you aunt and uncle call, something they never do. I put my phone on speaker as I was busy with folding the laundry. They ask how everything is going, how we're holding up during the COVID and such. We exchange some experiences and then they both go like this. This is the start of the convo. I and you, listen, we hear you have some college funds set up for some of the children of certain cousins. Is that true? Me? Yes, that's true I'm no liar. I and you, is it true that you took Mill, Phil, SIL1, SIL2 and family with you on holiday? Me? Yes. I and you, you also have a holiday home? Yes. Me? We do. But why do you want and need to know? I and you, we never knew you had so much money. Me, well, a lot of hard work, sacrifices, dedication and luck were part of it. And you, aha, well, you have to pay for our grandchildren's college funds as well. And we want to go on a holiday with our children too. We deserve it too. Me, shocked silence. And you, we're family so you have to pay. Me, less shocked silence. And you, yes, we want college funds for your six grandchildren each consisting of $800,000 for each child and we want a holiday home like yours but in location X we already have one we want. We'll send you the information. And that also goes for our family holiday. We're family and since you have the money, you can pay for us too. Me, pissed of silence. They continue to rant that they deserve it because their family and family takes care of each other. My hubby, meanwhile, had heard everything and was getting angrier. I had pressed a record button halfway through the convo and asked them to repeat their demands. I eventually asked them if they had more to say which they hadn't. I just flat out said that it wasn't going to happen. That they might think they're entitled to my money but they weren't. I quoted the phrase they and many of the family gave us when hubby and I didn't have the money and were in a tight spot because we had a health scare. We asked every family member if we could borrow some money and we would pay it back. Only three of the nine aunts and uncles helped us and we paid them back. The quote, it is your responsibility to have and save enough money for the care, well-being and education of your family. If you can't then you don't deserve them. We won't be giving you any money. Stunned silence on their side. I told them to relay the message to the rest and not to call us with such demands. And I hung up the phone. Hubby was very proud. In the weeks that followed the some other the aunts, uncles and cousins called with the same. Only those aunts, uncles who helped us in our time of need called and told us to say that it is our money, and that they have seen plenty of it and don't ask for more. One cousin called and asked for a certified loan for a down payment on a house, something I have agreed to. They had the majority saved but came short of $1,000. They had to pay for it sooner as they could get the house sooner. Just now I saw that I received the first half of it. That also raised hell. Then, with the aunts, uncles and cousins we had a Zoom call and I explained to them my reasons for not doing this. I told them that they could always come when they truly needed financial help but under legal contracts so that neither party would feel themselves screwed over. Cousin who borrowed money even showed the certified, notarized loan. Most seemed to understand, not entirely happy, but they knew they could come for help. But for some it wasn't. Then came the cherry on top. I came home last week on a weekday to find a lot of parked cars in an otherwise almost empty street. I had to pass my house in order to park somewhere else and around 15 minutes 20 of ants. Uncles and cousins had gathered in the front yard so much for social distancing. Afterwards, it were three aunts, three uncles and some cousins and their spouses. I parked the car and walked back home. Now here is something that few people know. I have security cameras around my home that record sound as well. Another thing that a few people know, don't mess with me. I am told that my right hook is very painful. So while walking back, I called the non-emergency line of our local police station. I told them the situation and telling them that crap might hit the fan. If they could come and assist in case it got out of hand, they would send some cops and crap hit the fan. The moment I stepped in sight of people, they started screaming, cursing, telling me to pay up or they will make sure that I'll pay. One way or the other, all the while cornering me. Some of them poked their finger close to my face and in my chest and arms. I told them multiple times to stop what they were doing and leave. Some time through this, more cops were called by some neighbors as well and when they arrived, were trying to get to me. Then one uncle made a mistake. 
he slapped me. A man of about 63 slapped me. A woman of just 52 across the face in full view of the cops. The crowd went silent as he put his face almost in my face and went on a rant that I had to obey him as one of the elders of the family. All the while with his hand raised as he would slap me again. He couldn't continue his rant. I knocked him to the ground. He stayed down, not unconscious but quite rattled and stunned that I had punched him. This was apparently what the cops needed as well. The family members were stunned and the cops managed for them to get away from me. They were pissed. A couple of the aunts, uncles and cousins managed to make a run to their car and drive away. The rest got to meet with some very angry cops, some fines for breaking social distancing rules and the expectation that charges might be pressed against them. To shorten the novel already, I'm fine, had some bruised fingers, uncle had a broken cheekbone, of my lovely cameras are now in the hands of the DAW. The other family members have distanced themselves from the crap that happened. To be honest, I feel really crappy. I feel like dividing a family because I just don't hand out my money. Hubby says that this is money that I worked hard for, so I get to decide what happens. Still, I'm thinking of setting some college funds aside for the rest of the children, thought I'm doubting that. It would also seem that I don't stand my ground and can be persuaded with violence, threats and harassment. And so, so sick of it. Edit, to keep myself from repeating. I've pressed charges against my uncle for the little love tap he gave me. Thankfully my uncle has not filed counter charges for the love tap I gave him in return. I've been told he asked for anger management courses and a ficological evaluation without prompts. His statement is that he got carried away and felt he was being egged on. He also wrote that he was extremely sorry and never meant to hurt me. I don't know what to believe. I know this behavior is out of character for him. He and his wife also contacted my lawyer with a written apology already. All those present had to give statements and one red thread emerged. They were there because the aunt and uncle who called me first the ones from this post had said they all should and see if they could convince me. As for charges concerning the others who were present, my lawyer is looking if they can get charges to stick for harassment. He is also looking if the instigators can be charged with a number of things. That guy is having a field day, he loves this. Those who are not involved have sent texts, called and sent me emails telling me that they're sorry for the behavior of their spouse, sibling, parent. They have not asked me to drop charges or anything though. Just apologies. Update, you paid for them. You pay for us. Submitted August 2020. A short update on my previous post. I also want to cover some of the comments without repeating myself. I find it hard to answer to all. I still wanted to thank you all for your comments and opinions. I will try to cover everything. Thank you for the awards. I know that some people might think it's fake. That's okay. I still wish it was. What I want to start with is that this behavior is out of character. This is my hubby's family and they have always been hardworking themselves, saved money, and family orientated. They did. Do not all have jobs that earned a lot. Them not loaning money when we needed it is because they don't like loaning money. They were afraid not getting it back as they also needed it. However, the comment they made then hurt. We talked about it at the time. They understood it then and apologized. Also, Hubby and I have a strong feeling that Blabbermouth Sill has said some things to them for them to go nuts. At the moment this is just a hunch, we'll see what time will tell us. So for them to pounce on me like this is not normal behavior for them. It doesn't change a thing though. Since the incident I have talked to cousins, aunts and uncles. On advice of my lawyer L I sent an email that I do not want to be contacted by them at this point as the visitors might face a lawsuit as does little love tap uncle LLTU. I gave them the contact information of L if they so wish or need. I asked them to respect this. I also advised the visitors and LLTU to find legal advice due to the circumstances. As of now, they respect this as we have not received calls, texts, and emails. Only one cousin is in contact with hubby. This is the cousin who has the certified loan and thus we need to be in contact with each other. He told hubby that the visitors and LLTU are very ashamed of themselves and realize they fluffed up enormously. He has heard some talk about mediation. LLTU even cried in front of him. A man who never cries. It seems genuine, but I'm cautious. I've read the responses and don't feel guilty anymore. I'm a person who helps when needed, always have. Even when we didn't have a lot of money people were always welcome to stay for dinner, and a night or two to get back on her feet. I have always felt lucky and blessed that I had a roof over my head, three meals a day and clothes on my back. Hubby and I discussed that we won't be offering any kind of funds for the other family members, their children or grandchildren. However, we are open for certified loans like cousin has but have decided that we won't be sharing this view for now. 
I'm not going to punish people for the actions of their parents, grandparents. Some people said that I should move and change my number. No, I won't do that. I'm not going to move because of what happened. We live in a safe neighborhood with neighbors who take care of each other. Also, as of now, this is an isolated incident. I did block them on my phone and social media. My number is known to many official authorities. And again, as this is an isolated incident for the time being I won't. Hubby chose not to block them and any contact of them has been through him. In case they want to message him and they say things that could be used in court. He wants to keep tabs on them for as far as that is possible. I'm okay with this. All the correspondence has been saved. L and I have a Zoom call planned for the next week. I have let him know what cousin said. He also hopes to have heard something from the DAW then. He said that mediation is an option and wouldn't be surprised if the DAW would look into this if the visitors and LLT you are open for this idea. There might still be legal consequences for them. He has some ideas but it also depends on the DAW and what the visitors and LLT you plead. L told me that he had some time to read some of the statements and view parts of the footage. Up until now their stories are consistent with the footage he's seen. At this point I want that their actions are recorded somewhere and have consequences for them. You do not get to threaten me, possibly my family, and harm me without getting your behind kicked at least once. Let them be scared crapless at this point. The footage is in the hands of the DAW and my lawyer. Also, a neighbor has also recorded what happened and that is also in the hands of the DAW and my lawyer. Neighbor also gave a statement. I also have the footage saved in other places. You never know. Neighbors know what happened. I sent them flowers with an apology for the disturbance. They appreciated the gesture. Neighbors are not afraid thankfully and have promised to keep an eye on things. Angel neighbors really. I don't consider myself a hero. I just try to be a decent human being. I don't flaunt the fact we have money. We live in a normal home in a normal street. We don't wear expensive clothes. The car I bought 10 years ago was brand new then and the baby is still going strong. It has some dents and scratches on it, but the baby works. I'm not going to buy a new car if this one is still working. Same goes for hubby's car. Kids have their own chores and get pocket money, but if they want something extra they can do extra chores for some extra spending money. They also have to save part of their pocket money. We want to teach them the value of money. The eldest realizes that we have a filled bank account, but has also seen what it has cost. Kiddos want a switch at the moment, so they're saving money for that now. We will pay for a certain amount and the rest they have to get for themselves. So we just try to be an average family. I hope I covered all the comments and questions. Thanks again for reading. And more family came out of the woodwork. Submitted December 2020. I thought to give a little info about the current going-ons here. The cast, LLTU equals little love tap uncle, the one who slapped me. The visitors equals aunts, uncles and cousins who came to try and persuade me to give them money. L equals our lovely lawyer. Blabbermouth equals Sil who couldn't keep her mouth shut and blabbed all kinds of things to the family. CLC equals certified loan cousin. Cousin who asked and got a certified loan. He has since paid it back. First, I am dealing with some health issues. Not COVID related thankfully, but I will need some surgery. There will be a lawsuit against LLTU and the visitors. When? Date is set for January at this point. Let's hope it doesn't get postponed. Hubby and I have written a letter that RL could read in court in the case we won't be able to be there, either in person or on a video call. Blabbermouth's role is becoming clearer but since we don't have the full picture yet, I will update later. LLTU had a minor fracture of his cheekbone apparently. Nothing major and he didn't need any surgery. Hubby, L and I have had some good and honest conversations about my own behavior. L is a friend I know from way back and he says that although I am quite the gentle soul, I can also be a strict, direct and have a no-nonsense attitude. I have always been family-oriented and wanting to help others. Unfortunately this has proved to be my downfall. L and Hubby agree that I can be more no-nonsense and stricter when it comes to family as well. I recognize this. I tend to sweep things under the rug because family. Stupid, stupid me. Since then, I get great feedback from the both of them and have sought out a therapist who says I have made improvements. Since the visit, Hubby and I have been contacted by many family members from his side. Mostly to ask questions about as they just heard one side of the story and things were unclear to them. Some of them were understanding about the situation. They were honest that they felt left out but as one cousin said it to be honest, I would not have thought of you either if something like this would have happened to me. They repeated they would appreciate any gesture, but that it was not their money to decide. Unfortunately there were some family members who came to the defense of the visitors and what was the big deal. I had plenty of money, just share as you won't miss it. Here we go again. They have been sending us messages on a daily basis hello harassment charges, telling us that we were selfish people and that family should share when good luck came their way. 
Then one day we received a request for a Zoom call from a cousin who had not spoken to us at all. We accepted, only to find out that it was the virtual ambush of the visit. Some family members had gathered online from their separate homes to talk to us. They got to minutes before I made it clear I wanted to say something. Me, I want to say something. People, okay. Me, so you want us to share the money. People, yes. A lot of behind kissing comments like really. You're the best. Me, first I want $2,000 from each of you. People, cry in outrage. Loads and loads of comments and then one of them said the magical words, why would I give you that amount of money? Me and my partner work hard for that money and now you just demand that amount. You can't do that. We all work hard for that money. Me, so do we. What makes you think then that you can make the same demands of us and expect us to give in to them? I will be honest that I loved the embarrassed silence that followed. CLC was part of it and said that when he heard about it, he called for a certified loan for the down payment on his home. He then went on about the terms of the loan and that according to the lawyer he had asked to review it was a good document. Strict yes, but it protected both sides. Hobby and I did tell them that CLC was given the loan because he asked for it nicely and agreed to a certified loan. One of them asked if we would do that again. We told them point blank that if they would want to borrow money we wouldn't be sure to agree to it because of a couple of things. They behaved like entitled people and treated us like crap. You don't get to treat people like this and then go kissing their behind the moment you want something. They all have jobs, save for it if it is something that is considered a luxury. The circumstances might change so maybe we would not even be able to help. If and that's a big if we decide to help out, we want the most minuscule details about what the money is needed for and they have to agree to a certified loan. Most people back out as they don't want strings attached or a claim made on their car, house etc. It was very very silent for a while. I told them that I had a good idea they wanted money because they wanted a more luxurious car or remodel the kitchen, bathroom, whatever in the house while it was still working and no hazard or in need of replacing. Maybe they wanted to buy that fancy item they coveted for a while or a game console for their kids. Save up for it. More silence and embarrassed shifting on their part. Hubby told them to stop harassing us. We were being blamed by tearing the family apart but their own greed was doing that. Up until now there were no problems and we all went along just fine. Now money comes in the picture and almost everyone changes into money-hungry morons. Yep, his words. He became very emotional as he said that this wasn't the family he grew up with and that he hated it to see them change so much. Then the apologies came from some of them. We then left the Zoom meeting telling them that we only wanted to hear from them if they came with an apology first and not to contact us as we needed space. Some have texted us those apologies and hubby had some phone conversations with them. Others have not changed their status from money-hungry moron and keep texting us all kind of wailing stories about how much they need, deserve money. One cousin even texted me saying that I deserved that slap in my face. I was not blood and should therefore just bow down to the will of the family. He even told hubby to get his wife back under control and be a good family member. He keeps harassing us and made some comments that hint on me being hit again. I simply said if he had talked to LLTU and how his broken cheekbone felt. Those comments stopped and CLC told me that he suspects that cousin didn't want to meet my right fist as cousin talked to him about it and had been hinting something along those lines. Every text is saved and go into a big big USB flash drive for L to get started on some nice cease and desist letters as some may know them. LLTU and the visitors have stopped contact when asked and advised to. So that was the update up to this point. On a more positive note, CLC and his GF had bought their house and when it was done we were invited to visit it mask wearing and keeping distance. They turned a house into a home. It was good to see the pride and joy coming from them. The aftermath concerning the visit part 1, explanation submitted April 2021. A lot has happened in the past couple of months. Due to the fact that it was an enormous amount of text I cut the update in more parts. A short summary of the people involved. Visitors, aunts, uncles and cousins who ambushed me at my home demanding money. LLTU, little love tap uncle. Uncle who gave me a slap in the face. L equals lawyer friend. First I want to say that I have read all the comments. Thank you for taking the time to read my post and comment on it. Also, I had my surgery and I'm recovering, slowly but steadily. Hubby and the kids helped me a lot. Bless them. I also read some speculation about the college funds. First of all, where I live college isn't insanely expensive like in the USA. These funds should suffice for community college type education or trade school, making it less expensive than private or top universities. Another point is that the funds only covers a good part of tuition and books. No rent, extracurricular activities or living expenses. So it doesn't cost millions like some people speculated. 
The mortgages were not entirely paid off, but I gave SIL, BIL and my brother an amount which helped them a lot. They have paid off the rest themselves. My investments they were done before hubby was in the picture were in some companies and technologies that have since grown. Not all investments have paid off but some did. We count ourselves very lucky. Part of it goes to our retirement funds and to charities at home and abroad. I've asked for investment advice from a professional when I decided to do that. I was about 23 when I did. I also followed some courses on how to invest. Also, I noticed that someone on the tube you used my stories and I've read the responses. Some people asked why I would help a Sill who behaves the way she did. Well, we love her kids and it was more for them than for Sill and Bill. Another reason was that we wanted to keep things fair, if that's possible. I now know that this might not have been the smartest move. The last reason was is that we had seen decent behavior for some time, so we figured that manners have been learned. Now back to the situation with a bit of backstory. Last time we left a visit that a couple of aunts, uncles and cousins came by for a visit to demand and scream for money. One of the uncles earned the title of Little Love Tap Uncle LLTU for the little love tap he gave me. One of the cousins who had a loan has paid everything back. I asked the family not to contact me but to contact my lawyer L instead. They have mostly respected that. They did ask for a Zoom call in which they could explain everything. L, hubby and I agreed to do so after the court cases would be over with. Also, the $800,000 was a total for all the grandchildren of the remaining family members. I finally got that one clear. Some people doubted that and thus I went over the recording again. Sorry for the misinformation. We later found out that they had just come up with a number and would just see how it would end. LLTU's broken cheekbone was not broken, just severely bruised. The grapevine is not always reliable. Also, we had some harassment from family members after the virtual visit. On to the update. I don't know all the details of the court cases as I couldn't be present not COVID but other health-related issue. Let me say that first. Also, due to COVID most of the conversations were through online meetings. LLTU was charged for trespassing, assault and threatening to cause bodily harm and he pled guilty. His lawyer said that he has been following anger management courses on his own and reports from the therapist and another court-ordered psychologist confirm what we thought. That this is not like him and he regrets everything he's done. Judge gave LLTU a very hard time from what L told me. Judge did not take kindly that a man would hit a woman. LLTU was asked some tough questions by the judge, the main was as to why he did it. Well now it gets juicy. It seems that Blabbermouth threw plain loads of kerosene on a fire that before her calls and texts didn't even exist. You see, the family didn't know that we had money as we had asked those who did to keep their mouths shut. That was respected. Until now, Blabbermouth called LLTU and the rest of the family telling them about the money and how we refused to share it with family. Then came the lies. Blavermouth turned on the waterworks, telling them and other family members that I made fun of their financial situation, flaunted my wealth, and was overall mean, disrespectful, and spiteful. She played the victim to them all, accusing me of horrible things. She then continued to say that I made fun of the rest of the family, for their choices of life, jobs, ambitions, and so much more. To keep a long story shorter, she pushed all the buttons and pushed them deep. The reason the rest of the visitors went crazy was again thanks to Blabbermouth, who really knows how to push people's buttons. That woman deserves an Oscar for her performance. LLTU and visitors apologized, for whatever that's worth. Judge asked if L had some input from our side. L read a letter we wrote. L told Judge that we were deeply hurt by what had happened. That no ill will, harm or disrespect was ever meant towards any of them. We chose to do with the money as we saw fit and would always have been willing to help. But having money does not mean that it should hand it out like it is dust in the wind. L also told the judge that we are very angry for their entitlement and behavior, them showing up and of course the slap in my face. I used to respect them a lot but I will not accept this behavior from anyone and ask the judge to have justice served. If that meant a sentence and record, then so be it. Why would I feel any compassion for people who felt the need to attack me? LLTU was sentenced with 18 months of community services and a fine, plus court costs. He also has to continue the anger management courses for at least another year. An evaluation will determine whether or not something needs to be done after that. This will go on some sort of record from what I've told. I have accepted this. The visitors were also charged for harassment and threatening a person. They pled guilty and had to pay a hefty fine along with six months of community service. This is something I also have accepted. 
Before I forget, they had already received and paid fines for breaking social distancing laws. Some other family members have received the equivalent of a cease and desist letter from L after the virtual visit, since some kept harassing us. It has been quiet ever since. This was part one. I will give an update soon about what happened after the court cases. The aftermath concerning the visit part two submitted April 2021. Burner account. After the court cases we arranged a Zoom call with the aunts, uncles and cousins involved in which the whole story became clear, and not only what LLTU told in court, thus the part that Blabbermouth played became entirely clear. L and their lawyer were present. They apologized and explained they felt really hurt and angry and that Blabbermouth insisted that they went for their rightful share, as they deserved it because of the hurtful things that I said, they were family and deserved it that family shares. Blavermouth told them she did it and that it worked. They also repeated the insults and horrible actions that I committed according to Blavermouth. They felt hyped up by her. That and greed got the best of them. They understand that this money is for us to do as we please. Our relationship is not the same and won't ever be. They seem to understand that we're not able nor willing to forget this attack on me, my character, and to an extent my hubby as well. To be sure, I have a no contact order against them for at least a year. It also dawned on them that one breach of the order will ensure they get to meet law enforcement once again, as I don't back down. They also realized that if we were ever willing to help out financially in forms of loans, they annihilated that chance. We have been brutally honest with each other. I was pissed. I told them that they are adults who should have known better than to jump to conclusions. I was calm and collected when family members contacted me, now I wasn't. I let everything go. I told them to at least have the decency and soundness of mind ask the other party parties involved for their side of the story and to listen to that side with an open mind. I tore them all a new one. I was brutal according to Hubby and L. I treated the family to 20 minutes of brutal honesty. Even Hubby and L. said they were impressed to the point of scared. After a lot of talking, the call ended. The relationship might not ever heal, but at least we discussed everything. I have my peace with that. If they could do this, then I don't want them as family. L thought that I had learned my own lesson about not letting family off the hook easily just because they were family. However, some family members who were not involved in the visit contacted me after the virtual visit. They wanted to know how it was possible to earn, get so much money. I shared some info about investing and gave them a number for advice if they wanted. With the number came the warning that investing has its risks. I earned a lot of money but I also lost plenty of it. They should not be investing if it will put them in debt. They thanked me for the warning in regards to college funds or whatever for them. We won't be doing that, simply because we won't want anyone to think that such things can be achieved by this behavior. I didn't really have a relationship with them, but still, you don't treat family or any other person like this. Hubby is still shaken that the mostly generous family he knew did what they did and treated him and me the way they did. I hope he will be alright in the long run. So that is the part of the LLTU and the visitors. I wonder what the future will bring. Apologies hacked submitted April 2021. This account of mine was hacked. I received an email someone changed my password. Since I had a health scare I couldn't change it fast enough. For the all that did that. Really. Do something useful with your time instead of hacking accounts and posting DCK pics. The aftermath concerning Blabbermouth Part 1 submitted June 2021. First of all, my apologies it took so long. I was hacked and it took the mods some time to restore my account. Last post is what happened to LLTU, visitors and the aftermath concerning them. This is about Blabbermouth, my oh so lovely not Sil who instigated the whole mess. Well, two of her kids moved out after a very bad fight with her. The eldest 26 Fahrenheit and her BF already had a home waiting and just moved in. The renovations are not finished but she said she didn't care. They sleep on air mattresses in one of the bedrooms and the rest of the house is a mess as they still needed to renovate a lot. Second kid 24M is staying with his GF at her parents' house where he helps with bills. Both have gone and see with their parents after founding out what happened due to their mother. Two of the kids 21, 19 are pissed off as heck but could not move out but aren't speaking to her and sleep at their friends' places a lot. The 17-year-old sides with his mother, though. But he's the baby and Blabbermouth has always spoiled him. I've read comments about how people suggested we could cut Blabbermouth's children off. No, I'm not going to do that. The 17-year-old did a Blabbermouth in regards of demanding money. I frankly said that if he wanted an education largely paid for by hubby and I, 
he will stop with what he is doing and meet the requirements that come with the money for college. Otherwise, bye bye money. I told him that if he starts acting and behaving like his mother, then bye bye money. ETA, yes, the money comes with requirements, very strict requirements. Don't meet the requirements, the money flow stops. I'm not entirely stupid. So far, he has stopped. His siblings tell me he is quite hilarious when he throws his temper tantrums about this. Bill and Blabbermouth also seem not amused by my standpoint in this situation. Like I care. The rest of the family also let her know what they thought. They called her, gave her a piece of their minds and went full blown and see. Blabbermouth and Bill are now pariahs in the family. Some cousins would help them with a paint job, not happening. Another uncle who checks their car every year for a reduced fee, told them to find another garage for help. Another cousin would renovate their roof. He gave the money back they had paid and told them to find someone else. MIL is heartbroken. That hurts. I don't think she ever thought her own child could and would do this and break up the family. She still has contact with the grandkids but her and Blabbermouth's relationship is strained. Same goes for Phil. Every Saturday we would have coffee with immediate family MIL, Phil, Blabbermouth and Bill and the kids if they had time. Us and other Sill. We still see them but we don't go there if we know Blabbermouth will be coming too or is there already. That has meant that the times we were there and saw her coming, we immediately packed our things and left. Blabbermouth had been badgering hubby. Me and the kids, alternating about how sorry she is and that she didn't mean for this to happen and acting like she did nothing wrong. One time she called hubby who put the phone on speaker once as I was curious as heck and wanted to hear how she dug herself deeper into a pile of crap. She didn't disappoint. I had to laugh hysterically when she spewed her crap through the phone. Told her that if she didn't want to happen, then why did she do it? Why did she tell all those lies? She just wanted money and employed the family as her minions to do her bidding. Because if I paid for them, I could pay for her right. She was silent. L is looking if any legal action can be taken against Blabbermouth. He has been given the texts from the family and from us. At this point slander, instigation for harassment and violence, and harassment itself are the ones he's collecting evidence for. He digs deep, he wants everything so he can throw it at her. He has even contacted the family to see if they were willing to hand over the texts voluntarily. Most did. Blabbermouth has been blocked from both our phones, email and social media after the last phone call. After she found out she had been blocked, she came to our home to try and sweet talk her way out of it. Bill also came. They even came together on times they knew that hubby would be out and try to intimidate, sweet talk me. My answer was to call the police. Next Blabbermouth tried to slander us to people in hometown. Unfortunately for her that backfired and she gets the skink eye from a lot of people in town. Then she did something that scared us a bit. One day a week my MIL picks up the youngest kids from school. They go with her, have a snack, are later joined by the eldest who goes to secondary school. They do their homework there, and then they either eat there, we all eat there or we take them home for dinner. MIL is always early but due to a doctor's appointment she and Phil ran late. Blabbermouth was waiting at the school of our youngest kids. Why? We don't know. The kids thankfully saw her and stayed inside the school. Eldest son had finished school early and had decided to go to his sibling's school to go with them and MIL. He saw his aunt and walked inside the school to wait for MIL with his siblings. Blabbermouth left shortly after. School was brought up to date on the situation and promised to call the police immediately if she was spotted again. In the meantime, we are waiting for an approval for a NC order against her and Bill. We have also moved to a different place. Initially we didn't want to, but due to what happened we thought it might be best to do so. Other people heard what happened and were very friendly all of a sudden. In the town where my brother lives, there is a nice place. The house is similar to ours. Our kids also know kids their age so a school isn't a problem in that regard. They start there in September. Eldest can still go to his school as there is a good bus connection with a short bus ride. A good thing is that my brother lives on a two-minute walk from our house, and the neighbors are also very nice and welcoming. My parents have moved to a smaller home close by. And no, we didn't pay for it, my parents were adamant we wouldn't. The only thing we paid for was for the rent of a moving truck and a good insurance for us as mommy dearest was frothing at the mouth because we paid for it. She doesn't want that. When hubby and I are working they come around sometimes to keep an eye on the house. We don't mind. They have never done anything to cause mistrust. We are looking into how we can protect ourselves further. Hubby, L and I are looking at all the legal things concerning this. Our house also has some security measures, like cameras with audio and video. They record and images are stored. At this point things are calming down. 
We are still close with hubby's other sister, my brother and other family members who are no part of the mess. So this was the update part 1 on Blabbermouth. I'll post the second part later. The aftermath concerning Blabbermouth part 2 submitted June 2021. Burner account. This is part 2 concerning Blabbermouth. We had a lot of conversations with Phil about Blabbermouth's antics. He thinks that her behavior stems from jealousy. Hubby and I had some years of financial hardship before it got better. Even before we came into money, we lived a relatively comfortable life after we managed to get more financial stability. Blabbermouth, Bill and their family weren't dirt poor but they didn't have as many holidays, weekends away or day trips as we did. It became less when our children were born but we still went away from time to time. Hubby has a knack for finding deals for such things, eldest has been learning Phil thinks that part of the jealousy started there, and became worse after. I asked if she might think that we wanted to flaunt our new wealth to her. Phil thought it might. Hubby and I think her behavior is twofold. We think that jealousy is indeed a part of it, but also entitlement. She always thinks that she and or her own family should be part of, in the spotlight and get something out of it, even if it is not about or for them. She seems to think that she deserves all kinds of things. According to Hubby this started in childhood and has continued into adulthood. I also asked my Phil why she disrespects me, my job. Phil stated that that may be jealousy as well. I managed to go through college and get my bachelor and master's degree. I've always worked, although less when our children were born. She didn't follow any higher form of education. She's got her education as a childcare provider for daycare centers and that's it. She stopped working for a number of years and has cleaned homes for a couple of years to earn a bit extra cash. Phil thinks that my educational rap sheet, as he jokingly called it, impressed her and made her jealous. I earned a great deal more before my investments started to generate money. I wonder if I did right by helping them out. My intentions were good. I know the importance of education and I knew that the kids would have difficulties following any form of college education without amassing a huge amount of debt, either for themselves or their parents. My parents worked hard to provide for my brother and I so that we wouldn't need to start our adult lives with debt. Our nieces and nephews are very grateful for everything we did and do for them. They know about all the effort that went in it. At this point we are also no contact with Bill and Blabbermouth. They don't know our current address and we have a po box in a different town. I also changed my phone number although I kept the other one for business purposes and to gather evidence. We have been awarded with a temporary no contact order from the court. Blabbermouth and Bill are not allowed contact in any way, not even through a third party. We are trying to get one for at least a year, maybe two if that's possible. She is also facing charges of defamation instigating violence and harassment. L is digging deep and throwing anything he legally can at her. The one thing I'm grateful of is that our friends never changed. They knew and they didn't care. They said that they knew that we had money and that it didn't matter to them. That what mattered is that we were there for and with them in the good and the bad times. M.I.L. and Phil do know where we live but they don't have the address on paper. Hubby drove them over one time. Hubby made it very clear to M.I.L. that under no circumstance is she going to show or tell anyone else where we live. People want to see us. She can pass on the message and phone number to us and we'll call them. Reason for this. Well, M.I.L. has a soft spot for Blabbermouth. M.I.L. has been asking if any reconciliation was possible. We said at this point, no. Blabbermouth is not even remotely sorry for what she has done. She is trying to deny everything that happened and even tries to blame us. She has destroyed our relationships with family members on her own. So no. M.I.L. tried to get us to forgive Blabbermouth as she didn't mean it, didn't want it to happen and such. Truth be told, I lost my cool at that point. I love M.I.L. to death, really I do. She is such a sweet lady and has done so, so much for us, especially concerning our children. But I told her the same thing as I told Blabbermouth, that she should be happy with the things that were given to her and her children. But N.O.O.O., she had to get greedy. I got slapped for crying out loud. I got threats against my life, hubby's life and the lives of my children. Even if it was said in the heat of the moment, like what the actual heck. Eventually I got up and left. Hubby and Phil talked to her and made it clear that it's not up to us to do anything to repair anything. That ball is in Blabbermouth's court. I did apologize to M.I.L. for losing my cool but not for the message. That remained the same. This situation has shaken me to my core. I have done things that go against my nature. Even without money and even debt, people were always welcome to eat at our table and stay over. Now I keep wondering if people tell me their sob stories because they want money from me and not care about me as a person. Just an ATM, nothing more. Do I regret helping out? Yes and no. The four eldest children of Blabbermouth are doing great. Same goes for other Sill, my parents and my brother and his family. CLC is doing great. He and his GF have some plans for their home and are saving up to it. 
he asked for investment advice. I gave him websites for courses and the phone number of the person who helped me all those years ago. We also made a savings plan and I helped them budget I do that as a volunteer for an organization that helps people in debt. My regret is helping out Blabbermouth herself, letting her share in the good fortune. But I can't help but wonder, what would she have done if we wouldn't have helped her? Probably just the same. She'll rear her ugly head in my life from time to time, of that I'm sure. If that's the case, my dear friend L will get the opportunity to sharpen his lawyer knives and have fun. As of now we are waiting for Blabbermouth's court case. Are you kidding me? Submitted July 2021. I don't believe it. This is a joke. It has to be a joke. L equals lawyer friend. First joke. I think someone has found out where we live. We woke up last Sunday to find the tires of the cars slashed. Oh. Of. Them. Not only that. It has some wonderful artwork on both sides of the car. Aka. It was scratched so what did Lil Old Me and Hubby do? If you guess check the security footage pat yourself on the back, you got it right. Our cars have dashcams that record 24-7 and are parked several streets over. Security measure number I lost track of them all. We take them out, place another set and look at the footage while saving recordings. You can guess again who you think it was. Did you guess Blabbermouth? Then I'm sorry to disappoint you. It was one of Hubby's cousins, the one who thought that I should just hand over the money, bow down to the will of the family and that Hubby should get his woman in line. Remember him? I certainly do. Police were called and we handed over security footage alongside pictures of said cousin's social media, address, phone number and email. Better be thorough right. Afterwards hubby called his mother to see if she, either by accident or not, spilled the beans. For now she didn't. She and Phil are thinking hard if they might have missed something. I called my family and they are also thinking hard if they said something to someone. And second joke, Blabbermouth and Bill have filed a lawsuit against me and to an extent hubby. Guess for what? If you guess defamation then dance your own wonderful dance. Since Blabbermouth is a social pariah in the family and in hometown she blames me for all her woes in this. People in hometown talked and a lot of people look at her with a upturned nose. They don't like that at all. Life has become somewhat uneasy for them hum, I wonder why. She's claiming that I'm the one who apparently blabbed outrageous lies to people in the town's gossip machine and caused her drama. Fun part is, it was her own mother. Because she was so upset with what was happening she talked and told a lot to a lot of people. Elle is still rolling over the ground laughing. They demand compensation for their ruined reputation. They are willing to settle to keep it out of court. He has already started on the answer. When I saw the letter I was angry and humored at the same time. Really Blabbermouth? That's your game plan now. Very well. Game's on. So who else's jaw has dropped to the depths of the sea? Update on cousin and lawsuit submitted July 2021. I have a small update on the cousin who decided to use our car to vent his frustrations as well as on the lawsuit Blabbermouth hit us with. Cousin has probably lost his job or has a lot of trouble there. Apparently his boss got wind of the fact that he vandalized our cars and was caught on camera. Don't know how he found out and frankly don't care. Boss is not happy at all. From the family members that don't have a NC order against us we hear the two different tales. What I know for certain is that at Cousin's job the stunt he pulled got him into serious trouble. We also have a temporary NC order against him. Damages are set to be fixed in two weeks time. Cousin has been told the amount of damages he has caused. He can pay for it out of his own pocket as of course insurance companies don't pay for idiots destroying other people's cars. He will also see the inside of a courtroom in either August or September. We also found out how he found our cars. His friend lives in the same neighborhood as we. We didn't know this. Cousin seemed to have told his friend his version of events and his buddy told us he saw us in the neighborhood. Wonder what friend thinks now, after what cousin did. As for the lawsuit, let's get the people clear. L equals lawyer friend. BL equals Blabbermouth's lawyer. My dear lawyer friend has had his batch of cookies and he loved them. He also replied to BL sending some of what he had on texts, voicemails and emails with the note that if Blabbermouth didn't drop the lawsuit we would counterfile and demand compensation of whatever kind. There are people who thought that Blabbermouth lied to her lawyer. She of course did. She told a bunch of lies and decided to fabricate evidence to prove it. Elle saw it. BL didn't like it and dropped them as clients. I can't help but wanting to be a fly on the wall when BL told Blabbermouth that. Let's see what she'll do next. I'm halfway wondering if I should get a popcorn and a soda for this. How Entitled Cousin Met Frufru submitted August 2021. Hey people, I have another update on Entitled Cousin or EC for short. He's the douchecano that said I should bend to the will of the family. I'm out of ideas for a nickname. LR Lawyer Friend is also mentioned. 
We're still waiting for the court meeting but some charges are being added next to vandalism and destruction of personal property. Though he didn't scratch our cars or slashed our tires this time. Smart man. Chipotle is instead he got to meet Frufru, our neighbor's dog and our neighbor and as it is summer hubby and I decided to go on a holiday in our own country again. Due to COVID we didn't feel going abroad to our holiday home. We are vaccinated although our children are not. We had a blast. Kids could go to the pool a couple of times had to make reservations and made friends with the other kids. Halfway through our holiday we got a call. Little big brother younger but taller than me of mine called to tell that EC had been arrested. Again. This time the Dushikano actually found our home. And you lovely people can try and guess what he did. Did he throw rocks through the windows? Nope. Did he spray graffiti on the house? Again nope. No, Mr. Smartapence tried breaking in. Our home has a big wooden fence around our backyard, but the position of the wooden planks make it impossible or at least very difficult to climb them. EC had come in the dead of the night, early morning hours and used the ladder to climb the fence. So he's in our backyard now, tools in hand. He starts getting busy trying to open our back door. Good luck with that our neighbor walks Frufru quite early in the morning. So N takes Frufru out for his first walk to pee. Poop for the day quite early. Our neighborhood loves the guy and his loyal friend. More than once has he found people at homes who should not be there. N and Frufru walk and find themselves looking at a ladder standing against the fence of my house. N knows the situation and that we are not at home. N hears some noise at our back door and realizes what is happening. So what does he do? He lets Frufru climb the ladder and jump into our yard. Frufru sees EC and starts growling. Who is Frufru? Frufru is the sweet, caring, funny, big and protective as heck Kane Corso of N. How did he get the name Frufru? Well, N's wife loves beauty and the beast and the little dog turned seat has the name Frufru. So EC sees Frufru, who is not amused at seeing a stranger in his yard. EC is apparently not so smart and throws a couple of tools in Frufru's direction. Frufru is having none of it, barks and charges. EC barely manages to climb on a table before Frufru gets to him. Frufru is a trained dog so he doesn't bite until ordered to. Meanwhile Anne is standing on the ladder pissing his pants at the girly screams of EC while calling the guys and gals in blue. EC is taken away in the back of a police car and has to stay in jail until his hearing. L demanded that he not be released until his hearing. The NC order is apparently not sufficient to keep him away. We managed to send the security footage to the legal people involved. Frufru got some nice doggy snacks and N and his wife were also thanked. I have to admit one thing though. When we got back the kids went to spend the night at their friends for some slumber party time. Hubby and I went to watch the footage. It was gold. And yes, we grabbed ourselves some drinks and a popcorn to watch it. Again and again. And now my own extended family knows as well submitted August 2021. Burner account. Title basically says it. My own extended family found out that I have money as well. I don't have a lot of aunts and uncles left. Plenty of cousins though as dad had six sisters who all had children. Only four cousins are younger than I am. I haven't spoken to them in like 20 years and the only times I have spoken with them was at a funeral of one of the aunts and uncles. I have no relationship with them. I received several messages of cousins who heard through a lot of people that I had money. When I read this, I was mentally preparing for yet another shitstorm. Yep, they was pissed. They wanted to know why I didn't tell anyone. One of them ranted and raved about how unfair everything was and I could have let them know and yada yada yada. When she finally was done I asked perhaps rather rudely if she was done and if I could explain. I made one group and I wrote the whole story of what was happening in that group. I ended with the words, in bold, underlined in huge letters this is why I never told you. Several were shocked that what happened did happen. I asked them why they were upset I didn't tell them. No one really answered that until I said that maybe because they wanted to benefit from it. Some no way, and how can you think that of us? I answered that the reason I think is because of all the crap that has hit my fan. I have lost a lot of trust in people in general because of this. To make a long story short, a couple of them asked if they could get yes get, not borrow some money. Others said they would like to borrow some if possible I uploaded a document that CLC certified loan cousin and I had signed. I told them that what was stated in the document were the rules. They could read it or not. One cousin asked if I could give him a call. I did. Turns out his daughter has a severe illness. Without treatment she'll likely die. I won't name it for anonymity's sake. There is a treatment in the US that could help her. Chances remain slim but if it is a success his daughter might live and live a somewhat good quality of life. Unfortunately that treatment is not paid for by the insurance company. I didn't trust it after so many stories and asked for details. He asked if I could come and visit. His daughter was in the hospital. 
He didn't lie one bit. God, that girl. She's in her early 20s, but still. Tubes and monitors everywhere. Books on bed as she tried to do some homework. I could almost see death standing at her shoulder, waiting. She was so. We had a talk and eventually her attending doctor came in and explained a bit. Later I went with the doctor to his office and he explained the rest. I went home afterwards. We verified the doctor's name, field etc. Cousin and I talked again on the phone. I told him I hadn't made a decision yet and wanted to know if they wanted the money for medical costs only. He confirmed that his wife, mother of said daughter would go to the US and they had money to cover her expenses. It would be tight but they wanted only the money for the medical costs. Hubby and I talked and we agreed. We agreed to help but again with strict rules. We would only pay the amount that we were given. The US hospital gave them a number. We would pay the hospital directly and other important details. Only thing we asked in return is that in the event of success and failure they would put a certain amount of money towards research, in installments if necessary. L lawyer friend drew up the contract and asked another lawyer to review it. This lawyer is specialized in the medical field. I called cousin again. I told him that I had thoroughly examined the entire situation. I had been played and lied to. I was attacked in many ways and I had lost my trust in people. I thanked him for his honesty in the situation and commented how hard it must be. I then asked him if his wife was listening. She wasn't but he put her on speaker phone. I then told them this news. The only thing I heard were tears, cries and thank yous. I told them that I had strict rules and sent them the draft of the document. I asked them to ask a lawyer or maybe the hospital lawyer to review it. If they agreed we could sign the document. Later their daughter called me. Same story as her parents. I just hope that this time round, the money will do good. Her doctor contacted me and we are going to arrange the financial details once the contract has been signed between my cousin and I. Other family members of mine have done the greedy grab hands. No was the simple answer, alongside the number of the investment advisor. Told them good luck and block the beggars. I don't worry as much as them finding out where I live. My parents, brother and his wife, my sil can win a tight lip contest with an oyster. New button new button new button new button new button. An update submitted November 2021. I have an update once more on the whole saga. I don't know if more updates will follow, but if something happens I will post here. The good news is that most family members have stopped bothering me and hubby. Eldest has a social media account that we go through together and he has received some nasty things on that. Eldest blocked them, reported them and thanks to our dear lawyer friend who sent some letters. It got relatively quiet once again. Those without a no contact order in place have suddenly reached out more often. People hubby or I haven't spoken to, within years contact us more often. We keep it polite and pleasant. Entitled cousin had to pay several fines, damages and has two years of probation. He tried to threaten us again. We told him Fru-Fru would love to meet him again. Blabbermouth knows in which town we live now. Entitled cousin seems to have told her. We have seen her around town. We hope she stays away as per the NC order. The bad news is about my cousin with the sick daughter. SD will be the sick daughter and DSD will be my cousin, her dad. MSD will be the mom, wife of my cousin. She was eventually allowed to go home for a while, although with a lot of equipment, medication and such. But hey, everyone was happy SD was home for a little while. Since the beginning of the pandemic SD quarantined and rarely went out. Same goes for DSD and MSD. They hardly allowed visitors over, their elder children quarantined, tested themselves before coming over, and wore masks when they came over etc. They took every measure to heart. They were warned that COVID would, could be the death of her. The times they went out were times that they knew places would be quiet and people were scarce. They took some sort of subscription to get groceries delivered to their house on a weekly basis. The driver, bless his heart, found out about the situation and even went as far as to disinfect and mask himself, even though he only put the groceries at the door. He also wiped the handles of the crates and bags. DSD and MSM managed to work from home the entire time. It was hard on them. I will cut the story shorter. SD died. She contracted COVID and due to her already weak immune system she passed away. She didn't contract it from her parents or siblings. They tested regularly just to be on the safe side. The likable source, a relative of MSD. The guy was someone who didn't take COVID seriously. He went someplace, got symptoms afterwards. He went to get himself tested because his boss didn't want him at a job site without a negative test. Relative works in construction. Well wouldn't you know, he tested positive. Health services explained what he had to do, his boss did the same. Boss would keep paying him. Relative had to stay home and quarantine. 
Back to the story. MSD and DSD had troubles with some leak. SD's room was next to the bathroom and they had been seeing some wet spots in her bedroom wall. Figuring it was a leak they called this relative. Ask him if he had time. They explained the situation and they asked him to take the precautions. He said he would take precautions. Told them he had tested negative on a test. Maybe he thought that since he couldn't work he would do this instead. Earn some extra cash. He had to come into SD's room to get some things done and took his mask off several times to cough saying it was so hot and he needed fresh air. He was reminded every time to get that thing back on. He was asked to leave and not to return after a couple of times. Work wasn't finished but they didn't care. The leak was found and taken care of with a temporary fix. A couple of days later SD got very sick and had to be transported to the hospital. She tested positive for COVID. She died there. To say people are devastated is an understatement. DSD called me in tears a couple of days after her passing. His tears were enough to know what had happened. In the background I could hear MSD screaming. It turns out she was calling her relative about her daughter's death and he informed her that he was positive the time he was there to help them fix things. My cousin said goodbye quickly and went to deal with that situation. I don't know what happened afterwards. Only thing I know is that MSD cursed and yelled at him for lying. Whilst knowing that SD was sick and COVID was a real threat to her. We did get an invite for her online funeral service. Hubby and I both attended. We sent some flowers and a card. This was almost two months ago. DSD video called last night. This wasn't a man anymore, more of a shell. Still so lost after the loss of his daughter, his only daughter, his wife. They are not doing great at all. It was heartbreaking and devastating to see them. We talked about the funds. They wanted to thank us anyway. We told them we wanted to donate the amount for research. They were glad we wanted to do so. So that's the update. Sooner than I would have wanted and not with the news I had hopes of sharing. Stay safe people and I hope you have a good, and above all, healthy holiday season. The inside of a hospital. How EC lost his job and how Blabbermouth has the honor of meeting Frufru submitted January 6, 2022. Dear people on Reddit, I thought that no more updates would be needed as the piece seemed to have returned. It wasn't for long however, last time I gave an update on the situation with my cousin. Now I write this as it is EC entitled Cousin and Blabbermouth related. For the people not familiar with Blabbermouth and EC drama, I refer you to my previous posts. Hang on tight for another long update. It all starts with EC and Blabbermouth staying in touch with each other. They kept complaining and apparently blaming all their misfortune on me. I am the source of their problems and if I just had done what I was supposed to do then none of all the bad things would have happened. EC then had the bright idea that I should be punished. So what did they talk about? Well, it put me in the hospital. EC had some friend of him follow me. Since I don't work the regular office hours it took me about three weeks before I noticed the same person following me around. I got scared as I have been followed in the past. Nothing came of it in the end but then it made me vigilant. I took some precautions to be sure. Made the reports with law enforcement and asked our nice neighbor and his wife, NN and NW, if he could keep an eye out. They would. NN has experience as a PI, law enforcement, specializes in training for police dogs and such. It happened about two, five weeks before Christmas. I was walking on the street talking on my phone when he see, and that buddy of his dragged me in a quiet street and proceeded to beat me. In a lull I managed to hit them where men tend to hurt a lot. Add some blows where I could before I set off an alarm with the volume of a ship's horn to alert people and do my best to get away. Where I'm from, civilians aren't allowed to carry guns, tasers or stun guns like in the US, so save the get a gun talk police and ambulance came. Reports were made, the whole shebang. I was brought to the hospital and the damage, a lot bruises, six broken ribs, a broken wrist and in some bruising to organs. I'm doing alright. I had to stay for a little while as there are some concerns about my lungs, liver and kidneys. Now, who is wondering where Blabbermouth is in this story? Don't worry, I'll tell you. To preface, in the time we have lived in this neighborhood, NN and NW have become friends of me and my family. They both know what has happened, know about the money and have provided friendship, sets of extra eyes and a dog for my children to fawn over. NN and NW don't have children not their choice and have become another aunt and uncle to my children. The children love NN, NW and are Frufru's biggest kid fans. Kids, NW and NN just a bit were begging for a sleepover with them. So after quarantine, testing negative on PCR tests, and such NN, NW and Frufru had my children over. Blavermouth found out where my kids were I think she has been following them and on the day that EC and his buddy were beating me up she went to them while they were outside and tried to convince them to come with her. When they refused, she grabbed the youngest and tried to drag him with her. Bad move Blavermouth. Frufru needed his walk and my children took him for that walk. 
Fennin was around but not close enough to intervene swiftly. There was no need, Frufru did. The moment she tried to drag my youngest away, Frufru came sprinting towards them and started barking his head off, growling when he wasn't. Fennin heard his dog, saw who was there with my kids and called the cops, while running towards the situation. A little while later Blabbermouth got to quality test the backseat of a police vehicle. According to Enon she was behaving like a Karen Hope I use the term right, telling everybody that was in the vicinity how Enon should be arrested for having a vile and dangerous dog and that she didn't do anything wrong. She's out on bail and charged with attempted child abduction and breaking of the NC order. EC and his buddy also had bail set and paid it along with some nice charges. As to what Blabbermouth was thinking, I don't know. I know that EC's idea was to beat me into submission. Hubby had a not-so-nice chat on the phone with EC's mummy as she called him and asked if we could drop the charges. Turns out that EC's boss fired him. It seems that he had some disciplinary action going against him already, and this was the final straw in his boss's eyes. EC got to his work, only to be lead into the office to meet with his resignation papers. We found out where his whole bow to the will of the family crap came from. Mummy dearest. She basically told Hubby that if I had done what they asked then nothing bad would have happened. I was from outside of the family so is she, married to an uncle of hubby so I should do as I was told. I just had enough time to get out some snacks and a drink to listen to the sweet sounds of him going ballistic. It was lovely and scary to hear. I took the phone when he took a breather and told her she heard what he had to say and the whole spiel of contact my lawyer. Harassment. Yada, yada. Click and block. She hasn't called since. Note, EC now had a good job that paid well. His wife also works and they are able to pay the bills, save some as well and have some extra to spend. He and his wife and family have a comfortable life. It's not like they are in dire straits with debts. So for people commenting that he must be desperate for money, he isn't. After this incident and a couple of attempted break-ins, a neighborhood watch was formed. We gave the people involved a photograph of Blabbermouth and of EC, told them only that we had NC orders against them and asked them to call law enforcement if they were spotted in the neighborhood. All in all we had a nice Christmas and New Year's Eve. We are doing as well as can be. I am still sore and have to go to the hospital for checkups. Hubby and I are getting progressively concerned since EC and Blabbermouth are not deterred by the piece of paper that states no contact order. Moving again is out of the question. When Hubby and I were talking one night while the kids were in bed, eldest had come downstairs and overheard us. He was adamant that he didn't want to move. His reasons were that if they did this and we would move again after each escalation, we would have to keep moving. He felt safe in this home and with Frufru, NW and NN in the vicinity. The other two agree when we talked with them in the morning. Kids are shaken but doing relatively well. Due to what happened, we are also looking into therapy for all of us. The youngest is quite shaken but for now is thinking more of how cool it was that Frufru protected him and how Blabbermouth was trying to climb a car. Eldest understands what has happened a bit better and is more fearful. NN and NW have offered Frufru for sleepovers so that the kids feel safer. We are also thinking about getting our own Frufru. NN has already offered to help in the purchase and training of the dog. Hubby is frantic with worry about what might have happened and what EC might try in the future. We are also going to do some research in how to protect ourselves further. We are talking with law enforcement, our dear lawyer friend and other people to see what is possible in terms of the law, and without turning our neighborhood in a heavy security prison or something like that. So that's that. A good update submitted January 7, 2022. I didn't think I would come back with an update so soon. Grab the snacks and drinks, turn on the music and dance with me or more, for me, as my ribs still hurt. EC and Blabbermouth have been arrested and are now finding out how the jail look from the inside. Hubby and I were both called by them, begging us to drop the charges. With this they broke the NC order and the bail order. We got everything recorded and then called law enforcement immediately along with dear lawyer friend. They were arrested. Just received the news. Happy but wiggle for me. EC meets karma submitted February 5th, 2022. A small update is I don't have a lot to tell but I thought that you might want to hear this. EC and Blabbermouth are still getting used to their new environment Aka. Prison. They are not to be released again until trial. We hope that won't change so happy dance for us. But EC met someone else and that one is Karma. And Karma is a B. I was informed of this by none other than EC's wife, henceforth known as Wonder Woman WW. WW came to my house not to yell at me, curse me or threaten me. Nope. She came to thank me. I was apprehensive and didn't allow her inside but what she put through the mail slot to me then made me invite her in. 
WW story. EC was apparently financially and emotionally abusive. He never laid a hand on her or their children and never abused their children but whatever money she made, he made sure he got it. She was only allowed to work for cash so he could get his hands on it easier. Whatever savings she had, he had forced her to surrender it in the name of we are a unit now. She was broken and afraid. He had threatened divorce and taking the children because no judge would give her custody since she couldn't support them. In that case he wouldn't allow her to see them as she was a bad wife and mother for leaving him. But now that he was behind bars she found the rest of the courage she needed and access to all of the bank accounts, joint in her own, as well as other important things. WW already had had contact with a divorce lawyer, but was too afraid to actually go through with it. Her parents had talked to her many times and told her to get some real legal advice. She finally did but was biding her time. So when EC got arrested and sent to prison for a longer stay this time, she got the locks changed houses in her name, inheritance, put all his things in boxes, closed the joint account after dividing the money equally, did a whole list of other things I can't remember and on the same day he was served with the papers. His parents got a lot of boxes with his stuff and a letter. WW was divorcing him. The stack of papers she gave me, a copy of the divorce papers. WW was crying. She was and has been so afraid. Apology after apology about not being able to stop him from doing all those things. The reason she came was to let me know this and how me getting beaten up and EC breaking the bail was the miracle she needed. She apologized because my misery enabled her escape. I told her I wasn't angry at her. She did what she could. I was a bit surprised about the speed of everything, but with help from her parents, her family and her friends she had been planning her flight to freedom as she called it for at least 7 minutes 8 months. What set her in motion was the visit and along with what he had said about it all. It lifted whatever blindness she had. WW finally believed those words others had said about EC. It took some time but after getting help, WW started planning everything. She's afraid but relieved. WW was crying tears of joy, fear and sadness at the same time. She kept apologizing although I ensured her she had nothing to worry about. Her parents are helping out financially for the moment as she is looking for a job. I asked her about what she used to do and after telling me, I gave an old friend of me a call. I knew he was looking for someone and asked if he could send the job description as I know someone who might fit. WW looked and told me this might work. Friday she called me say that she has an interview next week. Fingers crossed. We had a good chat and I gave her my number so she could call me if she needed help. I'm good at budgeting and next week I'm going to her and help her. So EC is in prison for the time being but when he gets out, sooner or later rather later, it will be crappy for him. He will have no job, no home, no wife, no support from friends his buddy told the friend group everything and they dropped him so fast as if he was a live grenade, a record and might not be able to go to his parents as his father is furious and disowned him. And that is how up until this point, EC meets karma. Let's see what else life, and hopefully karma, has in stock for EC. EC Meets Karma once again submitted February 12, 2022. Someone commented on my last post that they hoped karma would come to him through his fellow prisoners. Do you have the power to predict things by any chance? Because that has happened. LF lawyer friend keeps us up to date about both EC and Blabbermouth whenever possible. EC was wise enough to keep some details about his reasons for his prison stay to himself. Smart man. I'm told that some people who reside there don't take it well when you hurt women or children. But his fellow prisoners did find out he had beaten a woman and helped plan a child abduction. Well, he was given a taste of his own medicine. Only difference between him and me is that I had some serious injuries. He got beaten up but only suffered some bruises. No broken bones or internal injuries. Prison guards were quick to intervene when it happened. As to how his fellow prison people found out what he did. Well, his mother visited him and they were talking dot 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 and his mother does not have the ability to whisper dot 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 so I wouldn't be surprised that whilst they talked others heard and were not happy with what they heard. But that is a guess, her visit and what happened were mere hours after each other. Coddle Mum to the Not So Rescue submitted February 26, 2022. I would like to introduce you to Coddle Mum CM. She's EC's entitled cousin mother. WW Wonder Woman Ack. EC's soon-to-be ex-wife is also mentioned. To us it seems like she is in almost in complete agreement with her son. She doesn't like it one bit that her precious son had to exchange his nice house with wife and children to a prison cell and divorce papers. When CM and EC's dad were met with EC's belongings, CM lost her absolute mind. WW called me to relay the story. CM called WW and started her spiel of how dare you divorce my absolute gem of a son. 
Puke anyone. WW have learned from me and recorded everything in case she needed it. WW just simply waited till CM had to draw some breath before she something along the lines of that EC should be happy he wasn't charged with financial abuse as well proof of plenty according to her, and that since she loved her son so much, she could have him as CM always thought WW's only purpose was to provide EC with children and meet his every need. Some other things were said and WW is a woman who I start to admire more with each passing day. Really, it's like she broke free and became something amazing. She doesn't care that people play the family card. She learned from my mistakes and unlike hubby or LF she doesn't sugarcoat her words. She told me in no uncertain terms that I behaved with too much caution and forgiveness and should have burned them to the ground the moment they started their crap. I have to admit, I agree. He sees dad walked in on that conversation and lost his mind on CM. WW told CM that she did not want any contact. ECS dad could call and they would make arrangements for him to see the grandchildren. WW is working with a lawyer and social services on how to approach visits between CM and her grandchildren concerning some things that you will read below. So after getting an earful from her soon-to-be ex-DIL, CM started calling me and hubby demanding that we drop everything. Beg their forgiveness for nonsense like tearing the family apart and not doing what was right. We recorded, hung up, blocked her and saved everything we needed and filed for a NC order. But when all of her Shannon engines didn't work she tried something else. She seemed to have learned from her son EC where I lived. So she came to our house but as we have doorbells with camera love the invention with recording settings. I could enjoy the show from my spot on the couch while she dug her own grave. Like hell I was opening the door with CM outside. Ha 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 dot 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 and oh lady. Heck no. I was so glad my children and hubby were not home. Screams alternated between how dare you do this to my son. I am going to insert violence here to you. And you should have given him what he wanted. That is how it's done. Hello medieval mindset where the men matter and women only matter to give the men what they want. I understood in an instant where EC got this bow down to the will of the family came from. Too bad I couldn't get any snacks or drinks due to doctor's orders of rest but watching from the cameras how CM lost her mind and started throwing everything she could at my home and then get arrested by our town's finest people in blue was priceless. I am also slightly disappointed she didn't get to meet Frufru and my fourth baby LeFou. Yep we got a dog. LeFou is a super duper sweetie pie rottweiler mix of about two years old. Total lap dog for us and just the right kind of protective. He was already being trained by the name he went. Turns out that NW knows the breeder and she was asked to name the pups of this litter. LeFou and my family have been doing some extensive training with NN. This day, LeFou was at the vet with my hubby and children for meet and greet and health inspection. So hello, LF, do you still have some spare time? Now you don't, or have even less. LF is sometimes wondering if my hubby was adopted because he can't believe the sheer stupidity of some of his family members. Spoiler, he isn't adopted. Join the club. WW has also been updated about this. I thought she might need it in case CM and visitation of the grandkids. Oh and WW got the job. She is also in the process of further protecting herself but I won't share that info. I don't condone violence but that woman should be happy that neither my husband, kids, LeFou, NN, and W of Frufru were around. She would have been toast. But hey, the plus side is that she now know how the bench in a cell feels like dot 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 from my point of view at least. MIL Blue it submitted April 14th 2022. Dear Reddit people, I hope you are all well. I have a new, long update. Title says it all. Last week on Setter we went to have coffee with my Phil and MIL as we often do. We made sure to give them a call notifying them we would be coming so Phil could notify Bill in case he wanted to come and see order, works fine. Bill is not in the mood for visits from our local people in blue and fines. Kids came with us and hubby's other sister second kid of Phil and MIL was there as well. Kids love her although she is very opinionated and can only see things black and white. No middle ground. She and Blabbermouth do not get along. That was even before I became an addition to the family. For the sake of this post I'll call her Lucy. We get there, get our drinks with cake and are having a nice chat when MIL blew it. We told them that during these visits we would not discuss the situation with Blabbermouth and EC. If she wanted to do so, we would see each other for that on a different time and day. We want these visits to be for other things than that. This was firmly explained to especially MIL as she began to talk about Blabbermouth twice in a row. She stopped after we just got up and left. Then last week she had to do it again. MIL started to say she felt so sorry for Blabbermouth, how awful it must be for her. We told her to stop as this is not what we came for. Lucy also told her to stop. Then MIL asked the questions she should never have asked. Don't you have pity? Don't you feel sorry for her? Kaboom. My youngest two started crying. 
my eldest, me, hubby and Lucy all flipped our lids. Hubby and I decided that we needed to deal with our children. We took them outside, made sure they were calm and felt safe before I went back in. Lucy was still grilling her mother. I told her she could stop. M.I.L. wasn't crying but just looked at me with a numb look for the lack of a better description. My speech to my M.I.L. almost verbatim, to answer your questions. No, I don't feel sorry for her or do I pity her. We helped her with her home. We helped and still help her children with the college education. And if they do it right, with a home. We took you all on a holiday. Unbeknownst to you all it was my good word that got her the job she has now when I was asked. Because although I hate her entitlement and the way she talks about me, I acknowledge she is incredibly good at her job. I would never screw someone over if they I thought they are good at their job and reasonably decent to those they work with. She wanted more, she demanded we give more only because we are related. Because we're family. Like an obligation to do whatever. She always thought she had some priority over me. Hubby and our family simply because she popped her children out first. She had told Hubby to divorce me because I would never amount to anything and every form of education I followed was a waste of time and money. But the moment we have money she demands money. When she heard the word no to her outrageous demand she japped at the family, against our wishes, causing all the troubles we have now, destroying relationships in the process. She talked with EC about attacking me hurting me and abducting our children and acted on it. I needed surgery FFS because of that attack and I'm not out of the woods yet. Our children are in therapy because she tried to take them against their will. Hubby is in therapy because of her and EC as he feels like he can't protect his family. I will be fine, but she had the audacity to fuck with my family. Don't ever expect for me to feel sorry for her after all the crap she has put my family through. Her own family FFS. Family only has value to her when she can get something from them, no matter the cost to others. As long as she gets what she wants without the need to pay. You won't be seeing me or the children for a time. I don't care what hubby decides. You are his mother and I will never tell him he can't see you or talk to you. I love you with all my heart. I thank you for raising my husband to the man he is now. But I will not put the children through this sheer favoritism and hurt it causes them. To feel we won't be coming for a while. We have so much to deal with already and can't have M.I.L. adding to it. I or Hubby will give a call to discuss some things. With that I grabbed the coats and left. Hubby had a call with Phil later. They had a long talk about how he had enough of his mother's favoritism towards his sister when there is conflict. He told Phil that he holds no grudge against him but he needs a break. Lucy and I needed to do some shopping together yesterday, and she told me that M.I.L. could only sit afterwards. According to Lucy and Phil, after we left Phil didn't say anything to her. He just took the mugs, plates and stuff to the kitchen, placed it in the dishwasher, wiped everything down and then sat on the chair looking at her and just telling her, as calm as ever, you blew it. The daughter-in-law who forgave so much, was willing to let so much slide, who helped us out so much and who tried not to involve the law because of us and our family, has had enough. And she is right. M.I.L. started crying. Lucy was asked to leave then. To her credit, she leaves us be. Normally I would have taken her to certain appointments but she and Phil made other arrangements for the time being. We are NC with M.I.L. for a while. My children are devastated. They knew that M.I.L. had a soft spot for Blabbermouth but they are shocked that their grandmother ignores the hurt her own daughter causes to her son, daughter-in-law, and grandchildren. They miss her. They have a lot of questions. Hubby is broken and angry. He had a talk with his therapist about it. He misses her but he told me that his mother needs to learn a harsh lesson now. I told him once again that I would never demand from him to stop seeing his mother. If he wishes, he can go, he can call, whatever. I wouldn't be angry. He knows my boundaries. I simply won't go to visit nor am I willing to talk to her. For now we don't want the children to go there as well. If she wishes to apologize, fine. Not now, as I'm still fuming. If, when she wants to apologize, she will have to come up with an insanely good apology as I'm not willing to sweep this obvious favoritism under the rug. I've done that too much already. For now I have her blocked on my phone and I have removed myself from the family group chat. I love my M.I.L. tremendously. She helped us a lot when the children were little. In our time of need, they and my parents were there. They have always respected our parenting decisions even though they did not always agree with them. When M.I.L. and Phil babysat, they respected our wishes. She would freestyle when they were a bit older but made sure they had their sleep. 
ate healthy meals and snacks, with the occasional treat and such. I was always treated with love and respect. I helped them out whenever and however I could. So this hurts. She has seen me in the hospital. She saw what was done to me. She has seen the fear my children had and have, has seen the hurt in hubby's eyes. She has seen this all and all she knows and does is turning a semi-blind eye to her daughter's actions. She acknowledges EC's actions against us but not what her own doctors. Hello therapist, I just want this nightmare to end. Update on MIL blew it. Submitted May 5, 2022. A small update on MIL. MIL contacted hubby. She went over to our house. Hubby was home alone took a week off. We were expecting a parcel delivery. Delivery man came, hubby checked cameras and went to open the door. Parcel, signature yada yada. As the man went, MIL came. She came up to him and started talking. Hubby just stood there with the parcel in his hands and after she stopped talking he told her, Mom, your own daughter tried to hurt your own son and harmed your daughter-in-law and grandchildren. She knew Opus would be attacked and encouraged it. If she did not, she knew and didn't care what would happen to her. She didn't report it or do anything to try and stop it. My wife will probably need surgery again. Side note, left kidney, liver and spleen were always problematic, thanks to EC and the beating even more so to the point they might need to be removed. We'll hear this tomorrow. Now you ask us to pity her and show mercy when all that happened was because she broke the law. She hurt US. You keep choosing her, even when things like this happen and hit you across the face. When you see the damage she has done with your own eyes, you keep finding excuses for her horrible behavior. I've had enough. I know you love her and I will never ask you to choose sides. I only ask you to condemn her behavior and actions, nothing else. You don't. By asking us to show mercy and feel pity you don't. We don't blame you for what happened. We blame Blabbermouth and EC. Don't blame yourself for what they did. Stop defending her. Get therapy, you need it. You need to see what is happening and accept that by no fault of yours, your daughter hurt others. I love you mum. Now you need to go away. I don't want to talk to you when you continue to excuse her behavior and the harm she caused to others. Don't contact us. We will contact you if we ever feel ready to. Then he shut the door and locked it. MIL just stood there for a little while and left. I found hubby bawling his eyes out when I got home an hour later. I've sent the recordings of the doorbell camera to LF in case we need an NC order for MIL. I don't think so as he is the golden son and she always tends to do as he says. But better safe than sorry. In the evening Phil came by to watch a game with hubby and he told us what happened after MIL came home. Phil asked where she had gone to and she started to cry, scream etc and relayed what happened. That she doesn't want to lose her son and his family. She asked herself why had it come to this to which Phil truthfully answered that his son hubby was right. She kept choosing her daughter over her son no matter what. That she can still love her daughter but condemn what she did. She doesn't. MIL told him that all she feels is that the need to protect her child to which Phil responded that how understandable that may be. By doing so she hurts her other child. A child who also needs her. Paraphrased, love both and don't choose sides. Your daughter hurt your son and his family. Your son hurts because his own sister has hurt his wife and his children. He hurts because she cares more about getting what she wants. He hurts because you can't see that. Love both is as natural to you as a loving mother, but open your eyes to the hurt that has been caused. She asked him if he could help her with hubby and me and this is how he responded again paraphrased. I will not lift a finger to help you in this situation with them. This is all your own doing. I have warned you many times in the past, more so in the last year that this might happen. That these actions might have this outcome. Our son's idea of therapy might be a good idea. However, this will not automatically mean you get to see them again and be in their lives. Before this mess started, Hubby and Opus were kind, had an open mind, trusting, tended to see the good in people and when bad things happened to try and see what caused it and condemning it whenever they would deem it was warranted. They still are good, kind people, they still try to see and figure out what caused certain things but they have become suspicious of people's motives. They aren't so trusting anymore. They are scared that they will get hurt, that the children will get hurt. If you ever want a chance to see them again, you need to respect them and their decisions. Accept that they might not forgive you whatever you do. By now you know that they, and especially Opus, will not excuse behavior in the name of family any longer. She and our son have finally learned to stand up to such a degree that nobody dares to mess with them. You and Opus are both loving people, you love your husbands, children and others. The difference between the two of you is that Opus is now willing to go ballistic when she feels her children and or husband are threatened. 
Don T mess with this mama bear. She will not back down if you go too far and you know it. Do you understand why I love and respect this man so much? M.I.L. just kept crying silent tears. Lucy also tells me that her mother is a shell of who she was. She keeps saying that she lost her son and his family and how sorry she is. To be honest, I feel like karma came for M.I.L. As of now, I don't feel any inclination of having contact with her. She is elderly and I know that she might die without ever seeing us again. It hurts a lot. She really means so much to me but I will not expose myself or my children to her favoritism. She may be crying about how sorry she is. I will only believe her if she proves it. I don't believe words anymore, just actions. What we need is for her to show us that love for Blavermouth should not blind her to this degree. I hope she can, I truly hope so. She won't get a get out of time out card because she is family. Bill and Blavermouth have come to beg. A comedy submitted April 25th, 2022. Dear Reddit family, another long update. Trigger warning for some violence, abuse. I started writing about my experiences simply to gain insights, opinions and blow off some steam and as a somewhat therapeutic measure so to speak. I found out that my posts have been used by several YT channels to broadcast them to others. That's fine. When I found out about them, I was mostly interested in the comments. They really opened my eyes and showed me that I was naive, gullible and an incredible doormat. Maybe more so than what hubby and LF told me. NWNN found out about the posts and agree with you all. So thank you all. Other family members have also found out about the post. They weren't happy with it and some started to spout some bullshit about privacy. But when they read the responses and saw everything from my point of view, they felt even more ashamed than they already did. In one of my last posts people gave a lot of advice on protecting ourselves and our home. Thank you all for that. We have also been following some self-defense and martial arts classes when possible. The children were given alarms, schools were told about what happened and protocols were written for their safety. We sold our cars and bought other ones that we park some streets away. We have the majority of our groceries delivered as well. A company specialized in home defense was told to make our home feel safe again. We have a contract with that company so in case crap hits the fan. They know to haul their butts our way SAP local law enforcement also has a big red flag attached to our phone numbers and address. We don't expect a lot now but better safe than sorry. We certainly have learned that. The neighborhood watch is a success. We have had a lot less attempted break-ins and theft. My children have found their courage to walk LeFou on their own without either me or hubby. They are not as afraid as they were shortly after the debacle with Blabbermouth and EC. Talks with their therapists have helped a lot. Eldest struggles sometimes as he thinks that being the eldest means taking care of his siblings without fail. I needed some surgery as the beating made some pre-existing health issues worse. Hubby is still restless sometimes, he has taken his self-defense and martial arts lessons seriously. He thought and still thinks at times that he failed in his duty to protect his family. With the help of his therapist he can shake that feeling more. I've told him numerous times that he never failed us. He loves us and has always been there for us as a father and husband. Eldis takes a lot after hubby in this regard. It doesn't surprise me as I have proudly given birth to my hubby's clone. Fanon has been a great help as well. Sometimes men need another man, men to tell them whatever they need to hear without therapist talk. Current status on people. MIL, time out see other post, happened around three weeks ago. This happened today. Lucy and Phil, no problems. EC, still in prison, though secluded. Inmates really don't like him apparently. I'm not even wondering why. Coddle Mum, EC's mother, Bill, and C order had been lifted as of last week. No harassment or any other things so no reason for extension. He isn't blocked on our phones. If people want to dig their own graves, then I'm all for helping them. Blabbermouth, still in prison. What was me attitude? Only our lawyers talk with each other and with the prosecutor. The hellhag still has an active NC order. She has been blocked on my phone, not on hubby's. Same reason as with Bill. LF, lawyer friend, hero without a cape, devil without horns. Worth every penny, cent, dollar etc. BML, Blabbermouth's lawyer. Bro, my 1.89 meters tall brother, has the build of a tank, strong as one, kind-hearted, no-nonsense man. SIL3, bro's partner, Maggie for the sake of the posts. NN, nice neighbor. NW, nice neighbor's wife. Frufru, NW and NN's loving dog. Another hero without a cape who'll take snacks and cuddles as his reward. Lefu, our own loving dog. Hero in training, who'll also take snacks and cuddles as his reward. On to part one. LF called us. Apparently he got a call form bill that Blabbermouth wants to plead guilty in exchange for no time in prison. As of now, she faces between 5 to 10 years in prison if she's found guilty. I thought that this crap wasn't possible.
According to LF, she hardly has a chance at that. She can get a reduction but no more if she goes for the guilty plea. Also, what surprised us is that Bill called LF directly instead of going through their lawyer. So what does our beloved LF do? Laugh in the phone, hangs up and calls their lawyer telling them what Bill has done. Apparently BML just sighed deeply and thanked LF before hanging up. Our thoughts, Blabbermouth and Bill don't hear what they want to hear from their own lawyer so they try it through ours. Nice try. Part 2. Bill's visit several days after LF called to tell us about Bill and Blabbermouth's delusion. Fantasy we got several texts from four of our beloved nieces and nephews who are Bill and Blabbermouth's kids. Number 5 doesn't like me and like his mother, blames me for all of her misfortune. We know that the only he doesn't bother us is that his parents have warned him to stay out of this as of now he hasn't messed up that we are still somewhat willing to pay for his college education. The other four kids and us have a good relationship. They know what Mother Dearest tried to do and have decided on their own that they're done with her entitled crap and with their father semi-enabling it. One and two have moved out, three and four can't just yet but are barely home. Since their mother is in jail the eldest two decided to drop in on their father and younger siblings to keep an eye out and help when needed. Bill was very unhappy and angry. He knows that what Blabbermouth did was wrong but he thinks the whole kidnapping and assault thing is blown out of proportion. They were all having lunch and Bill came with the amazing idea to have a talk with me and to an extent. Hubby, whose phone explodes with texts after that lunch. Mine and Hubby's. Eldest niece tried and managed to get a time frame from her father and texted us that. Since we didn't want our children to watch whatever might go down. We asked Bro and Maggie if they could go there for a couple of days and hang out with their cousins. No problem after explaining the situation. The children were scared but didn't want to leave. Bro flexes his muscles they love that and tells them that he will keep them safe. Then we call NN and NW, explain the situation and to ask if they are available in case we need witnesses and help. Before we could finish asking we heard the doorbell ring. NN, NW and Frufru were there. I really love these people and dogs so some hours later and Bill makes his grand appearance. For those of you who wondered if we invited him in dot 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 of course not. Heck, we didn't even open the door. The doorbell camera has been the granted its own altar at our home dot 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 well, almost then. He began his sob story about how Blabbermouth didn't mean it. She was sorry yada, 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 sob sob sob. He asked, begged through his sobs if we could drop the charges. Nah, even if I could, I wouldn't. Oh Bill, fun fact. The prosecutor is the one who decides that now. You know, because what Blabbermouth did are felonies. You don't get to try and abduct people and get away with a slap on the wrist. You don't get to show your big blue eyes and get away with aiding and abetting assault. Even if he changes his mind it won't be because of your puppy eyes begging but of lack of evidence dot 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 of which he has plenty. You know that. I'm sure that your lawyer has told you this, so why the heck are you trying it here? Oh right, because you and Blabbermouth don't want to hear no. Last but not least, me. Hubby and children will be a lot safer if her entitled behind is in jail, and not polluting the free air with her sense of entitlement. After hearing this piece of information Bill became angry. Family this, family that, more family helps each other crap and the golden phrase was but she's family and you don't hurt family. To which we responded with but we're her family. Why did she hurt us then? No response. He just stood there. Then he started cursing. How I was SLT, a bitch and that it was all my fault. Sure Bill, blame the one who helped pay off your mortgage and your children's tuition because all we wanted was to help family. If you don't want the money, then we would like to have it back. Would you like to pay it back all in one go or a payment plan? Yes, we were semi-teasing. He raged on about that. How dare you? And it's not funny. Of course it isn't funny. But what isn't funny as well, is that Blabbermouth only accepted me when it suited her, and when things happened the way she wanted. If not, she would try to manipulate things and people so she could still get something of what she wanted. We helped you and when we say no to an absurd request, she loses her ever-loving mind. She destroys relationships, the good and the neutral ones. She destroyed our feeling of safety and our health, so on and so forth. For what? A holiday of which I know you have the money for or at least for a good part of it. You don't like it that she's in jail. That's fine. She reaps what she sows. You and Blavermouth should talk to your lawyer to see what can be done about this with the least amount of damage. Family means nothing to you and Blavermouth when it doesn't get you anything. Go away. We will call the cops and see if we can get more NC, restraining, C and D orders shoved up your behind. Oh and don't try anything stupid. Look at EC and Blabbermouth to see how that one worked out. After saying something along above said lines, he left. We made a copy of the video footage, called the police and went through the entire process again. LF came by for a visit and was baffled and actually sighed. 
he simply can't understand their thought process. Turns out Coddle Mum was also giving him a rough time by basically demanding he does something about her son being in jail. So he did something. He basically told her to shove off in a legal way. Unless she wants to spend money on her own lawyer and having unpleasant side effects from such legal papers. Like I said earlier in the post I needed surgery and NW has offered to stay when hubby is away to help me and keep an eye out. She can work from home and help out in case the family nut jobs return. She has become more than a friend. When she isn't working we talk a lot and got to know each other on a deeper level. Turns out, NW had been in a similar situation with an ex gone bonkers, even after she got together with NN and they try to help whenever they can as they know the anxiety, insecurity and fear. No ex problems for her thankfully. Do you see that? That's your college fund waving goodbye. Submitted May 15, 2022. A small but worthy update. Eldest is my eldest child. Youngest, the youngest one. LF, lawyer friend. This time Blabbermouth and Bill's youngest child. 18M. I'll call him entitled Apple Kid EAK as apparently the apple does not fall far from the tree. EAK is going to start college in September if everything goes well. As some Redditors might know I have a college fund for some people in the family, EAK included. They have strict stipulations and it only covers books and tuition. No extracurriculars, housing or living expenses. They want to go and live someplace else. Fine, on your own dime that is. At the start of this whole drama the eldest had finished college. The second is set on graduating this year. The two middle ones are busy with college. EAK is the last one. With all what happened EAK reared his head from time to time with offhand remarks and in the beginning demands for money. We made it very clear, in words and on paper, that if he continued with this or did others things that were by law not allowed he could wave his funds goodbye. Hubby and I operated on the notion of a child shall not suffer for its parents' blatant stupidity. If they decide to be stupid themselves, they shall reap what they sow. Blabbermouth and Bill have had some stern talks with EAK to keep his head down and to his studies so he could get his things paid for. They have always known we would never just hand over the money but get the information confirm it and pay for it. Still, they didn't complain about that free money, about the incident. We have instructed eldest to not escalate situations, call us, law enforcement and seek out other adults if needed and possible in case of conflict. Filming whatever he could was something he already had figured out. Well, EAK and eldest met by chance a couple of days ago while eldest and his siblings went out together. Eldest just gave him a hello and turned to walk away. EAK didn't like seeing him or whatever and started to shout and curse at eldest, preventing him to leave. My two youngest heard the commotion and ran to their brother's aid. Youngest started filming. EAK kept pushing his chest against eldest in compliments to my son. He never hurt him and stayed calm. When EAK grabbed his shirt he used some of his skills and self-defense to make sure EAK let him go but nothing else. My middle child then said something to EAK. Is it a family trait to want to go to jail or something? If you hurt him, you will go there. You might see your mother again. EAK stopped, looked at them all and ran for it. Kids got home, showed me the footage along with a witness's footage and contact details and we made a trip to the police station to file a report. Then we called our lovely LF to set things in motion for an restraining order or whatever is possible. After all that we made a copy of the footage my children made in police report and sent it to Bill. Attached to it was the note that another student thanks them for their donation of a college fund since EAK decided he can do without. He threw away his chance with his own actions. According to eldest niece their parents were not happy dot 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 not happy at all. MIL goes to therapy submitted June 22, 2022. Another update on my MIL. This one is shorter. Recap. Blabbermouth is in jail. MIL asks us for mercy and pity. We tell her heck no we tell MIL to get therapy and go and see. People in the story. MIL, good woman. But her love for her daughter Blabbermouth makes her utterly and completely blind. We are NC with her. Phil, good and wonderful man. Lucy, Sill, another sister of Hubby. Not entitled. Hubby, my husband, rock, stand-up comedian and greatest love. Eldest, my eldest child. Youngest, my youngest child. Born five minutes after their twin. Yep, I have twins. No, not identical, different genders. Characters are freakishly alike though. Therapist, MIL's therapist. This week Lucy came by for a cup of coffee and she gave us some, maybe shocking, news. MIL has found a therapist. This one is part of the same practice of our therapist. We never told MIL who our therapist was or where we went. Lucy could tell us that MIL already had some sessions but didn't know the details. Okay, that's a good sign. Well, we still eye it with some suspicion but let us see where this takes us. Then last night, Phil came by again and also told us, without us prompting him, 
that MIL had found a therapist and had a very intensive first couple of sessions. Phil has joined a couple of them so the therapist could gather some other perspectives. He didn't tell us before as he wanted to be sure that it wasn't a one-time thing. It seems that MIL came home after a session and when Phil asked her how it went, and how she feels, she seems to have said something like I really made stupid mistakes, didn't I? Phil asked her why she thought so and she told him that what he had said to her see previous posts was something that the therapist said as well. Therapist apparently said that to love a child isn't wrong but the actions that are caused by that love can do wrong to the child and, to an extent, others as well. Or something like this. She seemed very sorry and understood better what went wrong. MIL is finally beginning to understand the consequences of her actions. Hallelujah. We remain and see for now. We like this to think that this is a good start of MIL's learning process. Although it seems like good news, we are still apprehensive of letting her in our lives as of now. Our therapist knows about this all and has asked us to think about family therapy. We are thinking about this but we want MIL to really understand that why her actions drove us to go and see. Let's see what this brings. MIL continues with therapy, asks us to join. Spawn of Blabbermouth makes two new friends submitted August 6, 2022. Hello Redditors, it has been a month and I would like to give you an update on the current status quo. Cast, Hubby, my soulmate. Phil, my father-in-law. Lucy, Hubby's sister, elder sister of Blabbermouth, younger than my hubby MIL, my mother-in-law. Spawn of Blabbermouth, Blabbermouth's youngest, one who kissed his college fund goodbye, henceforth known as Saab. NN, nice neighbor. NW, nice neighbor's wife. Update on my own health, I'm healing quite well. I am home now and the doctors are pleased with my recovery. I can walk longer distances and work from home. I don't work to my fullest capacity but I'm grateful that I can do some things again. The update, to my utter surprise MIL continues with therapy. She goes once, sometimes two times a week and according to Phil has been making quite the progress. MIL has asked us to go to one or multiple sessions with us. It was her own idea. She wanted us to talk about it but in the confides of the therapy room as she feels like the therapist is unbiased. All right MIL, you scored another point for yourself with that in my, still suspicious, eyes. Hubby and I talked about it, between ourselves and our own therapist. We made a list, what did we want to talk about and what not. And we went and it went, quite well. Therapist started, explained why we were asked. We could say what we thought and MIL told them that she understood more, better, finally our standpoint. She had written down some examples hubby had used and she had a talk with Phil and even other family members about situations in which she blatantly favored Blabbermouth. To keep it shorter she explained why she felt how she felt, she understands that she should have done things somewhat differently and that she is sorry if she took Blabbermouth's side too much. She felt that Blabbermouth was like her in some ways not the entitled ways and therefore couldn't help herself. Okay, hubby and I just absorbed what she had said. I simply asked what made her see it this way. Some uncomfortable moving from her side while asking what I meant. I asked the therapist if I could be honest, blunt to a point. I could to a point. I told MIL that if things got difficult or, and when she wants things to stop happening she starts ignoring what happens. Like an ostrich she sticks her head in the sand hoping everything just blows over. Going to therapy and basically dig up every little dirty thing about this was difficult. What has happened that made her go against this tactic of hers? She looked me in the eye and said the therapist made me see you and hubby as kind people who love their family to a fault, allowing a lot maybe too much. That you love me. I ruined so much by my actions. Phil said the same. Aunts and uncles said the same. Even the ones who hurt you. The fact that my own son, you, and the children didn't want any contact with me was the wake-up call. I know what I did was stupid, but I really had the feeling you blamed me for everything that happened and what was still going on. I asked if I could speak on my own behalf. I told her that I didn't blame her for what was going on. I didn't blame her for the things EC or Blabbermouth did. That were their choices, not hers. She had nothing to do with any of it directly. However, I told her that by giving in so much in childhood, adolescence, and adulthood, Blabbermouth got accustomed of getting her way and expecting others to do what she wanted. If she didn't get her way she would manipulate to get her way. What felt like a knife through our heart is that I was attacked and in danger. Our children were in some danger and she kept asking for pity and mercy for Blabbermouth, condoning her actions, not looking at or not wanting to see what she was doing to us. That went too far, that hurt too much. We understand that she loves her daughter, but it is her selective blindness, that condoning, excusing that behavior etc. that just hurt us the most. I repeated what I have stated before. Love her as you want, I cannot and won't tell you who to love or not. But look at the actions of a person, the facts of them. She hurt us, your son, me and your grandchildren. 
we also matter. Hubby said he agreed with this and added his own feelings as well. She started crying and saying she was sorry. She simply didn't. Couldn't believe one child was hurting her other one. It ended there with a new appointment for a couple of weeks summer holiday for the therapist. I think it's a good start. So to be continued. NC will continue outside of the sessions. In the meantime we have also had to deal with Saab, Blabbermouth's youngest. Last time he tried to intimidate my eldest and by doing so he could say farewell to his college fund. The grapevine his elder siblings told me that his father, Bill, shouted at him for his stupidity as Saab had been warned not to do anything against any of us. We were still willing to let him use the funds for his college education but he had to stay out of the situation. Bill and Blabbermouth were told that very, very clearly thanks to LF, and they made sure that it was clear to Saab. Well, Saab wasn't too pleased he got yelled at by his father and by his mother during a visit. He didn't like it that whatever funds his mommy and daddy have, had were now being used for lawyer fees and not quite sure if there would be money left after everything. He didn't like it that he got a firm and resounding screw you. A hum no from his two eldest siblings after he demanded from them that they pay for his college education. His reasoning was that since they had jobs, they should help him out he didn't like it that both sets of grandparents aren't helping him out either with money. He didn't like it that he doesn't get any support or pity from anyone. He certainly didn't like it that when he asked our aunts and uncles for money and started to whine everything fell on deaf ears and got told that this was a lesson that he needed to learn. Poor Saab, a lot of things happened that he didn't like, and in true Blabbermouth fashion he blamed it on our family. What does the idiot do? He came to our house and like he see family stupidity I think he came by our house. Unfortunately for him, Fru-Fru and Lefu were waiting for him in the backyard dot 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 out of sight dot 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 when he climbed over our fence. NN, NW and us were at some elderly neighbors of ours a couple of houses away. And since the lady is a bit scared of dogs we opted to leave them in our yard. The couple has adopted us and since the lady of the house is an amazing cook and baker to say the least we love to frequent the place and help them out with what is needed. We were sitting in their yard, chatting away when we heard the screams and barks. I can't really run so I go and check the footage of our at-home cameras. Lo and behold, Saab is crouching on the same table EC was when he had to flee for 100 pounds of protective muscle, fat, and sweetness. Akka, Fru Fru. Now Saab got the honor and pleasure to meet Fru Fru and LeFou at the same time. Saab was, not, happy, blue clothed lads and ladies armed with shiny and not so shiny accessories show up and take him away. We don't think he can be legally charged with anything more than trespassing but beggars can't be choosers. According to our inside informants on that side it's safe to say Bill wasn't happy would be an understatement. Saab was picked up from the station, got tore some brand new holes, got his game consoles, iPad and everything deemed non-essential taken from him by his father. He has limited access to his laptop school only and has been grounded to boot. Saab is sulking a lot according to his siblings. When he started to cry to one of his brothers, he got told that it's his own fault and that he was stupid. He certainly doesn't get any pity from others. Why is Saab so entitled? Blabbermouth coddled him and that had more effect on him than when his father set him straight. We do hope that away from the influence of evil dot dot uuuh his mother it might set him straight. Let's keep our fingers crossed for this. Also, our court date is getting closer. As of now it is scheduled for the end of October if there aren't any delays. I'll update again after that. Wonder Woman. The story of how EC got hit by the karma train driven by his now ex-wife. Submitted August 10th, 2022. First of all, as I'm not really familiar to Reddit I just found out I had tons of messages from readers that I have missed. I didn't know that people could also do that. I also try to reply to as many as I can, but to the sheer amount of them in my limited time I'm not always able to respond. My apologies. Some people asked me to update on WW. WW is Wonder Woman, the now ex-wife of EC, is doing. She is doing amazing. She sold the house and the car that was in her name. She moved away to a place she is unwilling to share. She has a po' box somewhere and we see each other whenever we can. In the beginning she looked so drained and scared but now dot 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 wow. WW looks amazing. The kids are doing great. WW has a job she truly enjoys and her parents help when they can with childcare. Her ex Phil father of EC does get to see the grandchildren but without coddle mum CM, her ex MIL. What I didn't know is that coddle mum tried to get custody of the children by involving child protective services with false accusations. She got a slap on the wrist to which ex Phil told her not to do anything stupid as he would divorce her. Since they have a prenup she will be left with a lot less still comfortable than she has now. CM loves to brag about her status so a divorce is not something she wants. It took a while but slowly WW told family members and friends what EC was doing. 
He never hit her, no physical or sexual abuse. Still, plenty of emotional and financial abuse. I won't share the details. WW asked me not to but she is dealing with it as best she can. Like us, she, her parents, friends and relatives are somewhat afraid of what might happen in case EC gets out of jail. She has a good lawyer so they are, like us, busy with protective measures. This is EC we're dealing with. He is stupid and we are low-key placing bets on how long it will take for him to show up to which place. So, small but a nice update. I'm glad she is doing better. Trial has started. An update on us and Coddle Mum just had to prove she's an idiot. Submitted October 25th, 2022. A small update for you all. Hopefully this post will find you all in good health and spirits. First the abbreviations and people explained once more. LF, lawyer friend. Hubby, my husband. MAL, my mother-in-law, hubby's mother. NN, nice neighbor. NW, nice neighbor's wife. Coddle mum, EC's mother. The trials have started. I can't say anything about what is discussed until it's all over and done with. I can tell you that both EC and Blabbermouth seemed extremely nervous yet somewhat confident, arrogant even. When we hubby and I saw them the first day, we have not returned since I have work that needs to be done and hubby has trouble seeing his own family in the stands. Another point is that we have little desire to spend our time in a courtroom looking at the people who cause so much misery in our lives. Victim statements are in the file and those will be read out when it's time. LF updates us as well as some friends and my parents who apparently decided for themselves they wanted to be present every time or whenever they could. I told them that it isn't necessary, especially since my parents are elderly. But my mother simply flashed me a look that said enough. My father isn't man of many words but lets his actions speak for him most of the time. He said in our time of need, you and your brother are there for us. Now we are doing what we should do as parents and what we have always tried to do. Be there for you both in your time of need. Besides, I want to see what kind of people they are with my own eyes. My friends basically agreed with my father. I was there for their highs and lows, now it's time to return the favor. My more devilish friends say they are going as much as they can just to see how big of a hole they dig for themselves. I love these people. Hubby is not doing so well. Like I said, he has a hard time dealing with the fact that his own sister and cousin are on trial for harming me and trying to take his children. Anger and sadness are his two main emotions. The children are also quite nervous. We keep them informed on how things are and LF is doing a great job on giving unbiased information on what happens and how court proceedings work. Especially eldest is one for the details and nuances. He wants to know everything. Apart from nervous, they feel frightened once more. All this time EC and Blabbermouth were locked in a cell, safely away from them. Now they realize that a verdict will be given on the time they will serve if they will have to serve at all. We like to keep their release an option, as you never know. Therapist visits have increased to once a week online and once a week in real life. NN and NW have increased their visits with Frufru and the kids sleep better now that Lefu is with us as well. Nothing works better to soothe their anxiety than some gently giants giving hugs and slobbery kisses that will go into protective mode when needed. Things with MIL have become somewhat better, but she seems to be on a crossroads now that her daughter's trial has started. She has started her oh my poor daughter spiel again. We don't blame her, and she has kept the whole have pity on her out of her vocabulary. Coddle Mum also made an appearance. She decided in her infinite wisdom that it was a good idea to show up on our doorstep on the day before trial started. We saw her through the doorbell camera. NN saw her and asked if he could help her. Smart man kept her in front of the camera the entire time. She asked in a rather rude manner who he was. When he stated he lived in the neighborhood and was walking his dog she told him that she was here on an urgent legal matter. She was there too. Drumroll please. Threaten us with legal action if we didn't stop the court proceedings. Her grounds. Her son was provoked by my actions and thus it was self-defense. Therefore everything in court didn't need to happen and we should drop the charges. EC should be found not guilty if that couldn't happen anymore and we should tell the judge, jury that. Coddle Mum continued that if we didn't she had no choice but to take matters into her own hands and contact our country's child protective services claiming we were hurting our children and file charges against us for defamation. And it can be serious when needed but in the face of this blatant stupidity, entitlement and or delusion you choose he just laughed. He explained to her that this was not how it works and that she just stated she is trying to blackmail us by lying. But EC has his entitled tendencies from his mother so of course she doubled down and stated that all we did was lie and that I should have done what I had been told. For some reason this woman can't understand that hubby and I made a joined and unanimous decision on not wanting to be a monetary. A TM. NN told her to go away, get a therapist and prepare for the NC order that could be coming her way. So you can guess what and who has kept LF extra occupied. 
On a side note, I know that people will warn us that child protective services can be called by her or someone else out of vindictiveness and spite. We know, don't worry, joke will be on them though. We asked for their help on how to deal with our children after EC attempted to break into our home and again after what happened to them and me as well. They have also been involved due to the fact that my children were witness, victim of an attempted abduction. We have assessed as parents as well as a standard procedure, and we are deemed fit parents thankfully. They are updated on the things necessary. So that was the update. I will update as things progress.